uh, have played, uh, Don. And as I study our team and look at tapes of games, we just have far too many um, mistakes through lack of concentration uh, defensively uh, to be a, a real good basketball team. And that's going to have to be something that changes for us, not just uh, in this ball game today, but throughout uh, the remaining five games, including today, uh, for us to be in a position uh, where we would be able to do anything uh, at all when uh, the tournament comes around, if in fact we're even included in the tournament. All right, we'll be back with more in a moment on the Dodge Pregame Report. You're listening to Indiana University Basketball. Learfield Sports presents Indiana Hoosier Basketball. Brought to you by Advantage Moving and Storage in Indianapolis. And by White Castle. Where else can you buy them by the sack but at White Castle? This is a production of the Hoosier Network, a division of Learfield Communications Incorporated. When you travel, consider the intelligent alternatives of Ace Rent-A-Car. If you plan to drive, Ace has a diversified fleet of new low-mileage cars and vans with unlimited mileage and it rates to fit your budget. If you're flying, leave your car with a friend. Ace Valet Parking, just off the Indianapolis Airport. Ace's 24-hour parking service provides a convenient, secure, hassle-free alternative. Whether you drive or fly, Ace is the way to go. Ace, the intelligent alternative. How to move to a new house without calling Mayflower. You put the furniture in the truck, close the doors. Drive. Stop. Open the doors. Take the furniture out of the truck, and there you are. You're moved. What could possibly go wrong? Next time, call Mayflower. You can't be too careful. Call Hogan Transfer and Storage in Indianapolis at 639-9583. The people at the Central Indiana Midas Shops are showing that there's a different way to get your car repaired. It's called the Midas Way. They properly diagnose the problem so the work is done right the first time. They fix only what needs to be fixed, give you their exclusive inspection, and thoroughly explain your options. They honor your Midas warranty without hassle. They prove that a car repair company can be professional, responsive, and caring. So see your Central Indiana Midas Shops for that different way to get your car repaired. The Midas Way. That's the way it should be. Got a Minnesota team today that you've already alluded to, uh, showing a tremendous amount of uh, enthusiasm for this ball game in itself. Uh, some quotes in the paper uh, by a couple of the Minnesota players, uh, very much making this their game of the year, so to speak. Well, uh, it was that way last year when we came up here too, Don, and, and uh, we got started off, as I recall, a little bit behind, but we came back, and, and early in the second half, we went up by 17 or 18 points. Uh, all of the enthusiasm, all the hype, and every thing uh, prior to the game uh, it means absolutely nothing uh, unless the same kind of uh, enthusiasm is carried over into play by one team and not matched by the other. So it will be very important for us, I think, uh, to play well in the first five minutes of this game. Uh, if not, we could find ourselves in a hole that we just won't be able to get out from under throughout the course of the rest of the ball game. Minnesota, as you'll recall, my saying prior to the beginning of the season was the team I thought that had the absolute strongest team coming back uh, in the Big Ten. I thought that Michigan obviously loses a great player in Weber, but they lost some. They lost three really good uh, uh, backup players that, that that could shoot, that could play, that that really meant a lot uh, to Michigan. Riley and. and uh, uh, Palenka and Voskul were very important parts of Michigan's team last year, and I thought that Minnesota returned uh, size, strength, uh, shooting ability, depth, experience, uh, everything uh, coming back, but they they seem to have always had problems uh, playing away from home uh, while they've been a, a pretty strong team uh, as usual uh, at home. Uh, they're, uh, they're just not... Uh, uh, in this kind of position at this point in the year that I would have envisioned uh, them to be in. But you see, the thing about uh, that, that has changed basketball uh, quite a bit, Don, during the time that I've coached, now uh, in, in years prior to 
uh, the all-inclusive NCAA tournament that we have now, you'd get to this point in the season with four or five games to play and some teams out of the, out of the championship. Uh, and, and that isn't the case now. It's made for a far more interesting conclusion to championship seasons with an opportunity to go into the NCAA. So where you might have gotten knocked out of a chance to win the conference championship, you're still hanging in there with a chance to go to the NCAA tournament, which uh, you know, we only have one conference champion. So so many teams uh, that haven't won very many conference championships or haven't won any uh, have set as a priority goal that of getting into the NCAA. So I think the competition in the last four or five games of the season over the last uh, 10 or 12 years uh, has been much stronger, say, than it was in the early years that I was at Indiana because uh, only one team and then for a few years only two teams from the Big Ten would be able to go to the NCAA tournament. And now when a half a dozen teams have a chance to go, everybody is really playing uh, down the wire to make sure they have that opportunity. Coach, uh, just a comment. Again, you've uh, got some injury problems, or physical problems, I guess I should say. Steve Hart uh, being one with some back spasms, and Damon Bailey yesterday apparently was uh, suffering from the flu again. Well, and then Pat Graham's got a foot problem. So we've, we've fought that all year long, Don. You just uh, line up and play. Coach, line up wise today? Uh, Leary, Bailey, uh, Evans, Lindemann, and Henderson. Coach, best luck in today's ballgame. Thanks, Don. And uh, I'll be joined by Max Gerben in a moment as our Dodge pregame show continues. This is Indiana University basketball from Learfield Sports. With homes, careers, and growing families, too, women today have more responsibilities than ever. And State Farm agents are trained to help women keep up with their growing life insurance needs. Your State Farm agent can help you develop an affordable life insurance plan that's right for your family and your budget. A plan that protects the people who are depending on you more than ever before. To learn more about life insurance, call your State Farm agent. Who deserves to be called a sports legend? Ask 20 different fans and you'll get 20 different answers. But there's one legend everyone can agree on. The legendary Jeep Wrangler. With a shift on the fly four-wheel drive system, the choice of two powerful engines, and a frame specifically designed for off-road driving, it's easy to see what this legend is made of. And it's even easier to get into with the great deals now being offered at your Jeep and Eagle dealer. Jeep is a registered trademark of the Chrysler Corporation. You can support IU Athletics directly when you get your IU giftware at the official Big Red Gift Center in Assembly Hall, your official source for the finest selection of authentic IU giftware, workout gear, and souvenirs. Call today for our new catalog at 1-800-622-6707. When you buy from the official Big Red Gift Center, you're supporting IU Athletics and the IU Athletics Scholarship Fund. Open Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 and during all home football and basketball games. Call 1-800-622-6707 for your free catalog from the official Big Red Gift Center. Before you could grab a cross-court pass, fake to the left and shoot for three. Before you could make a break and go for the big slam dunk, defying the earthly force of gravity for a moment of serious hang time. You were a kid who kept practicing long after all your friends had gone home. At Pioneer Hybrid, we're proud to support the Indiana Hoosiers, and we salute everyone who has the heart of a winner. See your Pioneer sales representative for the variety right for you. From Williams Arena, the campus of the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis, this is exciting Indiana University basketball. Hello again, everybody. This is Dan Fisher along with Max Durbin. This afternoon, the Hoosiers of IU continue a treacherous two-game road trip, attempting to maintain their second-place standing in the Big Ten Conference, meeting the dangerous Golden Gophers of Minnesota. Under eighth-year head coach Clem Haskins, the Gophers have an overall record of 18-9 with an 8-6 mark in the conference that has them in fourth place and ranked 20th in both the coaches and AP polls. Meantime, Indiana now stands 17-5 for the year with a 10-3 league record and the 12th and 13th spots in this past week's ratings. The Hoosiers are coming off an 81-74 triumph on Thursday over Scrappy Northwestern in Evanston, while Minnesota suffered an 85-68 pounding at the hands of Michigan State on Wednesday in East Lansing. In the first meeting between these two teams, one month ago in Bloomington, IU gave a strong performance in handling the Gophers 78 to 66, and it's likely Indiana will have to be even better today if they're to win in this very tough foreign floor. 
Max Sturman, despite the Thursday triumph, who's your head man, Bob Knight, was not a happy camper. No, he wasn't. He was unhappy, of course, as he alluded to in his pregame show with you just today about his defense. Certainly, Northwestern came back from a situation where Indiana was up by 19 and uh, could not hold on to it. Well, before we go any further, we're going to break away here because we've got uh, some activity going to be taking place here in Minneapolis. You're listening to Indiana University Basketball. Do you have water spots in your dishes and glassware? Are your clothes dull and dingy after laundering? Does your skin feel dry and rough? If so, you need a Puritan water conditioning unit. Puritan soft water turns clothes whiter and makes dishes sparkle. Puritan soft water keeps your skin smooth and your hair shining. Puritan has over 40 models to choose from. Puritan Water Conditioning, 216 Lafayette Avenue, Crawfordsville. Phone 362-6340. Puritan, another name for soft water. Have you tried the Blazin' Red Fish Dinner at Zox Family Restaurant? Once you do, you'll probably agree there's nothing else like it. Zox Blazin' Red Fish is just what the name implies. Extra tangy taste that will wake up even the most worn out taste buds. And you have your choice of portions plus salad, potato, and roll all for one low price. Stop in and ask for it soon. The Blazin' Red Fish Dinner at Zox Family Restaurant. Something good for everyone on 231 South Edge of Crawfordsville. Once upon a time, there was a little girl with a little red hood who was going to her grandma's house to take her a basket of fruit. She had not gone far before she met three boys with knives who stole her basket. When she took a shortcut through the abandoned lot, some kids smoking crack threw a bottle at her. At grandma's, a big bad wolf was waiting for her in grandma's bed. Oh, what lovely eyes you have, grandma, she said. And just as the wolf was about to say, the better to see you with my dear, a stray bullet crashed through the window. It frightened the little girl so that she ran all the way home. The moral of this story is that the big bad wolf is nothing compared to the reality facing many children today. Give your children back their childhood. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT for free information. Together we will take a bite out of crime. A public service message of this station, the Crime Prevention Coalition, U.S. Department of Justice, and the Ad Council. Well, back once again at Williams Arena as we get set for basketball this afternoon. Max, as we were saying, Indiana head coach Bob Knight not happy with his basketball team's performance in the final 15 minutes against Northwestern on Thursday. And primarily his focus was on defense where... Northwestern got a lot of easy baskets. In fact, three consecutive baskets right underneath the hoop with virtually nobody stop, stopping them. That was exactly right, Don, and we talked about that after that game uh, in Northwestern. Indiana, not quite the defensive game team that uh, you think of when Coach Knight's teams. You know, early on when he came here, I thought his defense absolutely dominated everything. Unfortunately, you just can't say that about this team. And, of course, Indiana has struggled this year with injury problems, uh, and more have hit this past week. Uh, Damon Bailey was sick yesterday with the flu. Uh, also yesterday at the end of their workout session just prior to leaving here for Minneapolis, Steve Hart started suffering back spasms. Now we understand that his... Uh, uh, the, the treatment that they gave him throughout this last night has uh, done some work and apparently has gotten Steve ready to play here today, but how effective he'll be is still a question mark. And, of course, Pat Graham is still completely out of the lineup. Bob Knight would not talk much about the injury situation, and, of course, he can't afford to do so, but it is a major concern. Well, it is. You know, Pat Graham didn't even shoot, uh, didn't even dress for the shoot-around here yesterday when the team arrived, so that's an indication that they don't anticipate him doing anything and that foot that's been causing him so much problems just continues to be a nagging problem for him and uh, it continues to be a, as we said a major concern for this indiana ball club because uh, that continues to take bodies away max and there aren't that many and i think you saw that in the northwestern game there were some tired people in that game that probably there should have been more substitutions made but you really just don't have that many and i think well the other thing that indiana's got to be concerned about today when indiana has shot on the road below 50 percent they're 0 and 4. i didn't realize that until i saw a stat on that today and the, on the other hand, Minnesota is exactly the same. When they go over 50%, they win. So this uh, game today could come down to which team is going to score well. And I think that 
Also indicates what Coach Knight said, the first five minutes are probably going to be extremely important. And Minnesota has put major emphasis on this ball game. At least their players have, much like they did last year. Of course, they were looking for some revenge last year when Indiana came up here after thinking that they had some uh, a chance to win the ball game in Bloomington in this, a controversial ending, so to speak. On the other hand, uh, this year, Ariel McDonald's quoted today in the paper as saying, this is the game of the year for us. It's as big as any NCAA basketball game that we'll play. So that's putting the uh, onus right there on themselves. Well, and they don't get on national television all that much and don't have the history and long, deep tradition that Indiana does. These kind of games are very special. And again, I think it points out the fact that they're going to be playing a team that has Indiana on their jerseys. And that's all it takes to make it a big game. And Bob Knight, of course, in the walkthrough this morning, pointed that very thing out. Uh, this is the kind of thing you've got to deal with when you come to Indiana. You're going to be uh, uh, going out there with a target on your chest every time that you go out on the floor. So that again be the case today here in Minneapolis as these two ball clubs get ready to do battle. And, of course, the important thing from Indiana's standpoint, Max, they're still trying to maintain the possibility of a Big Ten championship. Well, they certainly are. They're just, you know, one game behind Michigan. It looks kind of slow because Michigan is playing so well, but if Michigan can stumble here someplace and the Hoosiers maintain what they're doing, they've got a chance, and you, you they won't have a chance that they lose today. Obviously, uh, Purdue continued their hopes of keeping the Big Ten title alive yesterday with a victory over Penn State. How about Northwestern yesterday knocking off Iowa and Iowa City? That is kind of surprising. Uh, Northwestern, as you and I both know, have played some pretty good basketball and have lost. Apparently, yesterday, they put it all together. And, of course, Michigan State, a victor over Ohio State yesterday. The other game in the Big Ten that will be played today, right after this one, is Wisconsin and Illinois. Well, let's take a look at the Midas starting lineup for today's ball game. Midas, try the Midas way, the way that it should be. Today, for the Golden Gophers of Minnesota, they will go at guard with their normal Ariel McDonald, a 6'3", 175-pound senior out of Raleigh, North Carolina, and Bashan Leonard at 6'4", 205. He's a junior from Detroit, Michigan. He averages 17.5 a game. Chad Colander will be the center. He's 6'9", 225, a junior from Owatonna, Minnesota. The forwards are Randy Carter at 6'8", 235, a senior from Memphis, Tennessee. And getting a start this afternoon is David Grimm. He is 6'7", 200, a sophomore from Massillon, Ohio. He averages 6.4. A contest he'll replace Jason Walton in the starting lineup, but Walton will be in there. And as we indicated earlier for Indiana today, it'll be Damon Bailey, a 6'3 senior out of Heltonville, along with Todd Leary at guard, 6'3, a senior out of Indianapolis. Todd Lindeman will be in the middle, the 7-foot sophomore from Channing, Michigan. Alan Henderson, the 6'9 junior from Rebuff High School in Indianapolis, will be at one forward spot, and Brian Evans at the other, a 6'8 sophomore from Terre Haute. That's the way the Hoosiers will line up this afternoon, and we're about set to get this basketball game underway here momentarily. We'll be back with the opening tip-off in just a few moments, so let's take this break. This is Indiana University Basketball from Learfield Sports. <laughs> The stars will always shine, the birds always sing As long as there is dust, there's always the real thing Coca-Cola Classic's always the one Whenever there is fun, there's always Coca-Cola Always Coca-Cola during this cold winter, you can save on quality products from your local participating Napa Auto Parts store. Count on the starting power you need with the Napa Legend 75-month battery. Now just $59.99 with exchange. And Napa's 12-foot long booster cables with long-reaching tangle-resistant cables and handy carry bag as low as $9.99. Save on these and other quality parts and accessories you'll need this winter. At Napa, we keep America running. Most people would like to save energy, but just don't have time to do the work. With a home energy upgrade from PSI Energy, we'll install energy-efficient shower heads, faucet aerators, and a hot water heater jacket. Wrap your water pipes, caulk, and weather strip for you, and for a small additional fee, PSI will install energy-saving fluorescent bulbs. That's over $200 of energy improvements, yet it costs just 20 Save energy and money. Call 1-800-521-2232 for your home energy upgrade and have a PSI professional do the work. Offer available to PSI customers with electric water heaters or electric heat. Hey, sports fans, play new Hoosier Bingo from the Hoosier Lottery. 
Here's how it works. You just scratch off the caller's card section on the left side of the ticket and rub the matching bingo numbers off on the four bingo cards on the right side. In all, there are 56 chances to win on every ticket. Top prize is $10,000. What easier way to win fast money? Play new Hoosier Bingo today from the Hoosier Lottery. Remember, you got to play to win. Learfield Sports presents Indiana Hoosier Basketball. Brought to you by Squadron Herbicide. Strike early, strike hard. Coca-Cola. Always IU, always Coca-Cola. Your central Indiana Dodge dealer. Hooks Drugstore. More of what a drugstore is for. The Hoosier Lottery. A proud sponsor of Indiana University Basketball. Indiana's Rural Electric Cooperatives. A power partnership providing safe and efficient electric energy to one million Hoosier. Midas. Try the Midas way. The way it should be. Pioneer Hybrid International Incorporated and your local Pioneer sales representative, PSI Energy. Call the PSI professional today for ways to save energy and your money. TWA, the most comfortable way to fly. Napa Auto Parts. We keep America running. Your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. And by State Farm Insurance and State Farm agents throughout Indiana who support Hoosiers basketball like a good neighbor state farm is there Once again at Williams Arena in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where basketball will be getting underway here momentarily. It's time for the Amex Cole High Energy Report, recognizing an Indiana outstanding student athlete. And today's honoree is John Pacey of Huntington, New York. John is the quarterback in the Indiana football team, has a 3.06 GPA in management. That's today's High Energy Report, brought to you by MX Coal Industries, powering your energy needs. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to Indiana University Basketball. The officials for today's ball game are Ed Hightower, Jim Burr, and Jody Sylvester. As the Hoosiers are about ready to come back out on the floor here, Minnesota will do so momentarily. Our opening tip-off sponsored by REMC. Ground fault circuit interrupters can prevent deadly shocks and fires. Any electrical outlet that is near a sink or water source and all outdoor outlets should be protected by a GFCI. Call your local REMC for more information about the safety provided by GFCIs. Don, let me, Don, let me give you a trivia question. Who was in the starting lineup in the last Minnesota game? The last Minnesota game we played. Uh oh, in Minnie uh, and in Bloomington. Bloomington. Right. Gosh, I have no. I, <laughs> I don't even think back past the last ball game. Back. Well, I was just looking at their box score, and I was kind of surprised when I looked at Richard Manville started at center. Ah. Let's see. Looking back at it, Todd Lindemann had seven points in that ball game, and Mandeville didn't score. So <laughs> I don't know how much time he had in the game, but I just realized uh, that he started in that game. Well, actually, Indiana had just three players in double figures in that ball game. The uh, leading scorer was Alan Henderson with 20, Damon had 19, and Brian Evans had 15 of the contest. That uh, certainly not unlike what we've been seeing in recent ball games. Damon has been terrific in the last three. 33, uh, 31, 33, and uh, 25, or 25, uh, 25 was in the middle of the two 30-plus games. And, uh, of course, Allen, who has played, I think, uh, terrific Big Ten basketball even uh, before that. But really, this Big Ten season, I think, has been his best ever. He has really done some things that Indiana has really needed down through the stretch. Uh, of course, Bailey, without saying, is uh, the heart and soul, I think, of this team. But certainly, Henderson has really played a major role. Well, we are about ready now as both ball clubs have come out of the floor here. Williams Arena, of course, has been refurbished. It is a beautiful facility. Not that it wasn't before. It's still very old, of course, and quaint. But they have done some refurbishing that have really made some the seating in here 
excellent for uh, from a viewing standpoint and of course from a comfort standpoint for the fans they have also eliminated a lot of seats max this now is a 14,000 seat arena 14,300 and used to seat over 20 occasionally well they brought in this chair type seats of course that's going to cut down just immediately Ed Hightower will toss the ball in the air. Jumping center for IU will be Alan Henderson. Chad Colander for Minnesota. We are set for the opening tip, and it is controlled by Minnesota. Here's Ariel McDonald in backcourt. Gives it right side to Leonard. Back out to McDonald. Todd Leary is on McDonald here at the outset of the game. The bats pass to David Grimm. Grimm turns and clears to Colander. Colander to Randy Carter, top of the key. He gives off to Vashon Leonard. Leonard right now goes against Henderson, takes it inside to Colander. They'll bring it back out. McDonald has it to Grimm. Grimm inside to Carter. Carter works the ball batted out of bounds. It'll belong to IU. Todd Leary batted the ball away, and Randy Carter tried to save it and couldn't get it done. So Leary brings it up the floor for Indiana. The Hoosiers' first possession offensively. The pass to Brian Evans. Evans goes left side down to Damon Bailey. He drives in, fires a 10-footer, misses an air ball, and the rebound is pulled out of there by Grimm. Grimm brings it up the court to McDonald. McDonald on the right wing. Back outside to Grimm, who goes to Vashon Leonard. Leonard, way outside from the perimeter, gives it off to Colander. Colander now slides it back out front to Ariel McDonald. He penetrates and gives to Leonard, who pumps a three and got it. So Sean Leonard with the first points of this ball game, and Minnesota with the early lead. Now, Leary goes to Lindemann to Allen Henderson. Henderson brings it out to the wing, crosses over the lane, pulls up, gives to Brian Evans. Evans clears to Todd Leary. Leary drives baseline, cut off. He'll look for some help. Finally finds Brian Evans, who goes right back to Leary for a three-point try. It's no good. Rebound tipped up by Damon Bailey. Bailey scores on the rebound tap, and nobody blocked him out. He scores for IU. 3-2 Minnesota. Here's McDonald on the right wing. Dribble gives an outside to Leonard. Now to Grimm. Now to Colander. Left side on the baseline. Colander slides it back out front to McDonald. McDonald top of the key to Colander left. He drives. Pulls up. Gives it back out to Grimm. Now to McDonald. McDonald down to Randy Carter. Carter back out to McDonald for a three try. And he misses. Rebound inside to Brian Evans to Todd Leary. Leary on the breakout, top of the key, he'll slow it down to Henderson. Henderson, right side, lost the ball. Taken away by Colander, here's McDonald the other way. Ariel gets to Leonard for a three, and no good. Rebound batted away, Leary tried to save it, got knocked down, Indiana will have it. So Indiana gets the possession, and the Hoosiers down by one. Gopher fans thought that Leary was the guy who touched the last. Here's Todd with a dribble. Bounce pass to Damon Bailey. Bailey inside to L Lindemann for a turnaround jump shot that's good. Todd Lindemann cans his first bucket. The Hoosiers take the lead by one. Randy Carter now for Minnesota outside of McDonald. Now off to Colander to Leonard. Leonard on the left wing. He holds, directs some traffic, gives to Carter top of the key who pumps it up and hits it. Randy Carter just inside the three-point line for his first two, and Minnesota retakes the lead. 5-4 score, Hoosier ball, Leary across the time strike. Todd Leary in backcourt, spins, takes it right in the corner to Damon. He pumps the long one and missed it, and the rebound inside to Randy Carter. To McDonald. McDonald roars it down the line, and he lost the handle. He's called for double dribble. So the turnover against the Gophers. Here comes Richard Mandeville into the ball game. Mandeville checks in. Allen Henderson sits down. And Damon Bailey gets the inbound to Todd Leary. Leary across the timeline in backcourt. Spins, looks at right, comes back left. Gets it to Brian Evans, down low, a whistle. And a foul away from the ball against Indiana. Todd Lindemann is going to be nailed at it. Lindemann called for his first foul. So Lindemann gets nailed on a personal. And it was 16.42 on the clock here in this first half of play. Indiana's a 5-4 trailer. Minnesota basketball as Ariel McDonald crosses the timeline. Backcourt pass to Vashon Leonard. Right wing to Randy Carter. Inside pass to Leonard who puts it up and in and a foul. Damon Bailey will be nailed on the personal. And Vashon Leonard has got his fifth point of the ball game. 
with a chance at a three-point play here. And he could give Minnesota a four-point lead here in the early going. Well, Indiana Hoosier basketball is brought to you in part by Pioneer Hybrid International Incorporated. Talk to your Pioneer sales rep today and get the hot of a winner on your side. Leonard cans the free one, and he's got his sixth point of the ball game, and Indiana's down eight to four. Here's Leary against full court pressure, gets it into Damon Bailey. Back to Todd. Leary will try to bring it up against the three-man trap, gets it to Brian Evans, it's battered away. Off the grim, now into Colander, up and in. The Hoosiers did not beat the press that time at all. It's 10 to 4, and the Gophers have a crowd into it now, and they lead it 6 to 4. Down the court, Todd Leary looks, drives, gives it to Bailey. Damon across the timeline. Gives it back to Leary in the corner to Brian Evans. Inside to Lit or Mandeville, now outside to Leary. He fakes, fakes again, gives to Damon Bailey. To Brian Evans inside the Mandeville. Turnaround jump shot is no good. And we got a pushing foul on Damon Bailey. And Bailey's got two quick ones here early. So Bailey now with two personals and a timeout. Minnesota 10, Indiana 4, 15.53 to go in this first half of play. And we will be back in a moment. This is Indiana University basketball from Learfield Sports. Car accidents can happen at any time. And they can happen in the blink of an eye. The trouble is, if you drive after drinking, you can't react that fast. At State Farm, we understand the importance of designated drivers. They save lives by driving and not drinking. Accidents happen. But drinking and driving, that's an accident waiting to happen. State Farm asks you to be a good neighbor. Be a designated driver. This message brought to you by State Farm and your local State Farm agents. If your goal is economical home comfort, PSI Energy can give you a home court advantage. Call PSI about a Smart Saver High Efficiency Heating and Cooling System or a Summer Saver High Efficiency Cooling System. With both systems, you enjoy reduced energy costs, enhanced home comfort, and lots of other energy saving values. Call PSI at 1-800-521-2232 about a Smart Saver or Summer Saver new home or an energy efficient system for your existing home. That's 1-800-521-2232. Well, Indiana is trailing Minnesota early, 10 to 4, 15.53 on the clock here in the first half. You know, your local Coca-Cola bottlers and the Coca-Cola company recognize the always fine athletes that make up the Indiana Hoosier basketball team. Always a winner, always Coca-Cola. Well, Don, it's not hard to figure out what the problem is. Indiana's hitting just two out of six right now. They've turned the ball over three times. Minnesota is four out of six. They've turned it over a couple of times. Henderson now has come back in. He went out at the 1645 mark. I uh, had the feeling he might sit there a little while longer with the reaction Knight had when he sat down, but he's bringing him back in now. So Damon Bailey with two fouls will be back in there. Alan Henderson is in the game. Brian Evans, Richard Mandeville, and Todd Leary. Todd Lindemann is now taking the rest as Henderson returns to the ladder. And a long timeout period here for national television. And Minnesota now will return as the horn sounds. One of the things uh, Henderson and Evans have not even put up a shot yet in this game. Here are two of your three top scorers not even getting a shot so far. Both the Damons have been well off the mark that he has taken thus far. Minnesota will have it. They lead by six, and here's the pass into McDonald. The Gophers haven't made a change in their lineup as of yet. McDonald across the timeline. He gives it to Leonard. Vashon Leonard right side to Randy Carter. Carter looks in, holds, and stands there. Finally dribbles, gives it off to Ariel McDonald. He goes left side to David Grimm. Grimm outside to Leonard, right side to McDonald. McDonald circles, stops, bounces into Carter. Randy Carter inside to Colander, batted away by Henderson, picked off by Brian Evans, and a foul call on Chad Colander. Colander picks up his first foul of the game. First team foul whistled against the Gophers, and IU will go against full court pressure here in the inbounds pass. Evans gives to Leary. Todd now will bring it up against Leonard. There's the trap. He gets the pass to Damon. Now up to Brian Evans. Evans in backcourt to Todd Leary. Now left side to Damon. He pumps a tray, and it's good. Damon Bailey, his second basket, and his first three-point field goal. Now down the left side, Grimm gives it outside to 
McDonald, they pass it around, and finally up with it is Leonard, off to Grimm, who fires it into Carter. Carter fakes, puts it up, missed it, and Alan Henderson's got the rebound and a foul on Randy Carter. So the second rebound, the last two times down the floor, have cost Minnesota with foul trouble. Carter now with his first, and the second team foul against the Gophers. Again, the full court pressure will be slotted here, and in comes Ernest Zigamazabo replacing Randy Carter. So Zigamazabo checks in. He's a senior on this Minnesota club. Damon Bailey and bats to Brian Evans. Back to Damon. He'll work on Errol McDonald. And Damon across the timeline. Damon in backcourt, spins to the right, pulls up, gives to Leary. Todd fakes, drives in the lane, fires a 10-foot runner, and couldn't get the rebound, or the uh, shot the fall, rebound to Colander. Here's McDonald. Off to Bashan Leonard for a three. Got it. Two Indiana players at the duck that time, and nobody recovered defensively. Nine points for Leonard. It's 13-7. Here's Brian Evans for IU. Brian gets it into Henderson. It's batted out of bounds, and Indiana turns it over. Four turnovers now against IU. 14-18 on the clock, and the Hoosiers are down 13-7. Up the floor, across the timeline, Ariel McDonald in backcourt. McDonald goes right side to Colander. Colander outside to Zigamazabo, left side to McDonald. McDonald clears to Leonard, who fires another three. Got it again. That is the 12th point for Sean Leonard, who has a hot hand early. Here's Lindemann outside to Bailey for a three try. Got it. Damon counters for Indiana. Eight points for Damon Bailey. Lindemann, the fans thought it traveled. Here's Len or Grimm, rather, with the ball. Out to, to McDonald. McDonald, left side, bats past the Zigamazabo. Back to McDonald. He drives it out to Grimm, who fires a three of his own, and he misses. Rebound pulled out of there by Brian Evans. Evans to Damon Bailey. Bailey up the court. Down the lane. 15-foot jump shot. No, but a foul. David Grimm will be nailed on the personal. That'll be his first of the afternoon. And Damon Bailey will go to the free throw line for IU. Here comes Pat Knight into the contest. And Brian Evans will get a run. So Pat Knight checks in. Brian Evans sits down. And Minnesota makes a change as well. Let's see. They've sent in Townsend Orr replacing uh, Ariel McDonald. And Damon Bailey connects on the free throw. Bailey now has his ninth point of the ball game. So getting off to kind of a... Rocky starts shooting-wise. He comes back, and he's got nine with a chance at his tenth. David Grimm sits down. Jason Walton checks in for Minnesota. Second shot good, and Damon Bailey now has his tenth point. Indiana's within four. It's 16 to 12. Across the timeline, Townsend Orr. Orr looks to the right, takes it toward the left side, gives it to Jason Walton. Walton outside pass to Ziga Mazabo. Top of the key, he holds on, looks it, gives it off to Townsend Orr, back off to Vashon Leonard. Leonard now on Pat Knight, the switch on him, and Lindemann goes to him, and then he fires the three, it's no good. The rebound, Lindemann pulls it out for IU. He gives it to Damon, down the floor to Henderson. Allen turns, takes it inside, pulls up, fires, and missed the shot, and the rebound comes off to Minnesota. A lot of defensive pressure on Henderson that time. He still took the shot, but missed it. Townsend Orr to Leonard, outside to Zigamazabo. Right side to Walton. Walton fakes, drives baseline, pulls up, throws it up, and got it in the foul. Jason Walton has his first two points of the game, and he'll have a chance at a three-point play. 18 to 12, and the Hoosiers are a six-point trailer in the ball game. But again, Henderson goes to the sideline, and coming in is Richard Vandeville. At the free throw line is Jason Walton. Walton with two points on the, on the afternoon. He's averaging 6.7 a ball game this year. He is a decent free throw shooter. Overall, 66%. Big 10 play better, 70%, and he cans that one. Three points now for Walton, and it's a 19-12 ball game as David Bailey takes the inbound from Pat Knight, drives past two defenders, and takes it across the timeline. Damon all the way in the lane to Mandeville, who fires, and got it. It's a roll in. Richard Mandeville's first two. 19-14. Indiana is a five-point trader in the ball game. Minnesota outside. This is Ziga Mazabo to Leonard. Now lobs it into Jason Walton. Inside to Ziga Mazabo. Up and in. First two 
first two points of the game for Ziga Mazzabo. A nice pass by Jason Walton. A great look there. 21-14. Indiana's down seven again. Here's Damon. Bailey looks inside, comes out to Pat Knight. Knight drives it in, gives it back to Leary. Todd Leary looks, drives it right, pulls up, fires underneath the Mandeville, and up and in. A nice look by Todd Leary, and Mandeville's got his second basket, his fourth point. It's 21-16, and the Hoosiers now trail by five. Backcourt, this is Townsend Orr. Orr starts it right, gives the pass to Jason Walton in the wing. Outside to Randy Carter, who's returned to Ziga Mazzabo. Now to Leonard. Leonard fires an 18-footer. It's got it. And Deshaun Leonard with his 14th first half point already. He hasn't been stopped. 23-16, the lead back to seven for the Gophers. Here is Pat Knight. He looks inside, dribbles it, circling to the right, pulls up, looks for help. Having trouble, finally clears to Bailey, a whistle away from the ball. We've got another foul against IU. And Mandeville, I believe, is nailed on it. It'll be his first of the ball game, and timeout is being called with the score. Minnesota 23, Indiana 16. We have 11.05 to go in this first half of play. We'll be back in a moment. You're listening to Indiana University Basketball. Life insurance. There's all kinds. Term, whole life, universal life, age categories, restrictions, discounts. No one knows better than Thompson Hopper and Associates how confusing life insurance can be to people. Mainly because everyone's needs are different. They can't begin to tell you what's best for you until they sit down and talk with you. Call Thompson Hopper and Associates and tell them what you want from your life insurance. Thompson Hopper and Associates, good guys with a good name, built on good insurance service. Great horny toads. I hate rabbits, but I love the Showdown Saloon. Everybody loves the Showdown Saloon. It's the place to go in Crawfordsville. Two complete bars, five pool tables, pool leagues, dart leagues, ping pong, color TV. Showdown, a great place to meet new friends and have fun. Great horny toads. I hate rabbits, but I love the Showdown Saloon. 125 North Green, downtown. Well, back once again at Williams Arena, where Indiana's trailing Minnesota 23-16, 11.05 to go in this first half of play. Hoosier sports fans, hold on to your seats for this week's official game update, brought to you by your own Hoosier Lottery. Lotto Cash is $2 million. That's all cash paid to you all at once, and Powerball is also an estimated $2 million this week. Remember, someone is going to win, and it might as well be you. So play Lotto Cash and Powerball right here in Indiana. Well, Don, Minnesota is really lighting things up. They're hitting 9 of 14, 64%. Indiana's shooting 50%, 6 of 12. The Hoosiers, however, have turned it over five times and has been very costly. Leonard is the guy, of course, as you've called it, who is absolutely uh, destroying Indiana. He's hit five out of seven. He's hit three out of five three-point shots, and that has been a big difference in this basketball game. Indiana has been down by as much as nine. They're now down by seven every time they creep back. Minnesota comes along with matching basket. Todd Lindemann, Richard Mandeville, Pat Knight, Damon Bailey, and Todd Leary. The lineup for Indiana on the floor. Minnesota comes back down with Ariel McDonald returning to the lineup now. Let's see, he's joined by Jason Walton, Randy Carter, Ernest Zigamazabo, and the Townsend Orr. So Vashon Leonard, who's had the hot hand for the Gophers, gets his first rest of the afternoon. Indiana back on defense, trailing by seven. The Gophers, Ariel McDonald brings it across the timeline of the walk. Now he starts to pick up the pace, fires it left side, it goes to Walton. Walton back to McDonald to Orr on the right wing. Orr slides it back out, top of the key. Goes left to McDonald, McDonald in the corner. Can't get the shot away, goes out to Walton, not Orr. Orr flies it to Zigamazabo. Inside, nice speed to McDonald for an easy layup. Another nice back cut, and Ariel McDonald with his first two. Nice speed on the play by Zigamazabo. It's a nine-point Minnesota lead, their largest. Todd Leary to Damon Bailey, baseline. Can't take the shot, bounces it out to Leary. Todd Leary drives, passes to Lindemann. Back out to Damon. Damon again in the corner to Leary. He fakes the three, pulls up, gives to Damon. Bailey with it in backcourt. Damon slides it to the right side. Pass, or fires it up, and got in the foul. Damon Bailey drew the foul on Townsend Orr. 
Orr picks up the personal, his first of the ball game, and Damon Bailey with his 12 point here in the first half, and he's got a chance at a three point play. Now coming back into the lineup for IU, or for the first time, is Steve Hart. Hart will give Todd Leary his first rest. 10.07 to go, and the Hoosiers, Damon Bailey is having himself back another outstanding first half of play. He's hit four out of six from the field, including two out of two from three-point range. Shot is up and good, and Damon Bailey now has 13 points in this contest, and it's 25 to 19, Minnesota by six. Ariel McDonald to Townsend Orr, back to McDonald. McDonald in backcourt, takes it out near the midcourt stripe, now moves it to the left side. Still in the dribble, McDonald goes top of the key to Zygma Zabo, down low to Carter, a whistle, and a foul is called against Todd Lindemann. Lindemann just got nailed in his second foul. That brings Bob Knight off the bench, and he did not like the call at all. Second foul on Lindemann. Now Bailey and Lindemann each with two personals here in the early going. And Bashan Leonard checks back in for the Gophers. Now the outside pass to Jason Walton. Goes right side to McDonald, who fires and hits a three-pointer. That's the fifth point for Ariel McDonald as he unloads. And the Gophers continue some hot shooting here in the first half. 28-19, Minnesota. Here is Pat Knight to Richard Mandeville. Mandeville on the dribble once. Looks for help. Finally clears to Steve Hart. Hart drives the left side. He pulls it back out. Gives it to Bailey. It's knocked away. A scramble for the loose ball. Picked up by McDonald of Minnesota. Fast break to Carter. And he lays it up and in. And a foul on Steve Hart. Randy Carter scores his fourth point. Steve Hart will be nailed with a foul his first. And Carter with a chance at a three-point play on the Golden Gophers could go on top by as many as 12 if he converts. Again, that would be their biggest lead as they also have it at 11. Well, Minnesota has the last two games shot less than 50%. They've lost them both. The three, four prior games, they shot better than 50% and they won three out of four. So you can see what's happening. Now Carter is firing up, looking for his fifth point. The shot's not gonna count. Somebody stepped in the lane too quickly. And Indiana will get the basketball. So the lead is at 11 for the Golden Gophers. The Gophers have a lane violation. And here's the inbound, Pat Knight to Steve Hart. Gets it back to Pat Knight. He'll bring it up. Gives it off to Hart. Hart now trying to drive it across the timeline. And a force out is called against Minnesota. Ed Hightower is calling a foul against Jason Walton. Walton picks up the personal. That'll be his first of the ball game. So the team foul is the fifth foul against the Gophers. Across the timeline, Damon Bailey. Damon starts it toward the right, gives it out to Pat Knight. He drives it in, fires it up, missed it badly, and the rebound comes off to Randy Carter. Across the timeline with Sean Leonard. Takes it right, kicks it out to McDonald. McDonald crosses the key with it. He'll pull it back outside, top of the key. McDonald holding up one finger, clears it to Jason Walton. Walton brings it out, gives it outside to McDonald. McDonald takes it to the right wing, gives out to Randy Carter, left side to Colander. Colander brings it out to McDonald. McDonald again goes right to Bashan Leonard, into Carter. Carter turns, fires, and hits. Randy Carter has six points now, and it's 32 to 19. It's a 13 point lead for the Gophers. Damon Bailey to Pat Knight. Knight brings it back outside, gives to Steve Hart. Hart, right side to Lindemann. Todd holds, back out to Steve Hart. Hart looks inside, goes back right to Pat Knight. He drives baseline, gets to Damon. Damon's 14-footer is no good. The rebound batted away. Damon Bailey retrieves it for IU on the long board. Now, he goes back to Knight. In the corner to Hart. Hart, back out to Pat Knight. Knight now gives it off to Richard Mandeville from 17, and he misses the shot and the rebound to Randy Carter. Carter goes to McDonald. McDonald, right side to Colander, and a slam dunk. Four points for Colander, and the Gophers lead is at 15. And the Hoosiers are getting blown out here in the first half. Seven and a half minutes to go. Here is Lindemann inside and a block shot, and it's saved by McDonald. Colander to McDonald. McDonald. Outside of Carter to Colander. He drives into Carter. Carter, 18-footer. Got it again. 
Eight points for Carter. And the Gophers lead it 36 to 19. 7.05 to go in the half. And the Hoosiers are really having their problems. Pat Knight looks inside. Back out to Steve Hart. Hart looks right. Comes back down on the dribble. This crowd is really into it now. Here is Hart to Damon Bailey. Bailey slides it back. Looks, gets it into Mandeville. His turnaround jump hook is so good. And the rebound comes off to Jason Walton. Down the floor. Walton top of the key. Fires the long one. No good. Rebound. Colander and Minnesota regroups. Cross court to Bashan Leonard. Another three. And no good. And this time it's batted out and a foul will be called on Randy Carter. Carter gets nailed in his second foul. Timeout will be called here, I will assume. Sharon Wilkerson and Brian Evans are going to come in momentarily. 6.26 to go. Timeout on the floor. Minnesota 36, Indiana 19. And we'll be back in a moment. This is Indiana University basketball from Learfield Sports. A winning tradition. Teams strive for it. Fans dream of it. And owners, well, owners pray for it. But a winning tradition is something you can get into right now with a family of Eagle Summits. There are three sporty styles to choose from, like the attractive and economical Summit Coupe and Sedan. And then there's the always affordable Summit Wagon with plenty of room for the whole team. So whatever your needs may be, the Summit lineup is sure to fit into your game plan. So see your Jeep and Eagle dealer today. In the battle against weeds, there is a winning strategy. Strike early, strike hard. Strike early with Squadron Herbicide Soil Applied in conventional and conservation tillage, especially no-till. Strike hard with Squadron to control over 50 broadleaf weeds and grasses, including common and giant ragweeds, seedling Johnson grass, nightshades, pigweeds, common sunflower, and cockleburr. Then reap the rewards in the field of battle. For to the victor go the spoils. See your Cyanamid AgriCenter dealer and always follow label directions. Well, Indiana has put themselves in a hole. 6.26 to go, first half. It's Minnesota 36, Indiana 19. TWA, proud to be a sponsor of Hoosier Basketball. Our team wishes your team the best of luck in winning the Big Ten Championship. TWA, the most comfortable way to fly. Well, Indiana's been outscored 15-3 to in the last four minutes. It was a respectable seven point, the 23 16 margin, make it a 20, a five point, 21 to 16 margin. Minnesota has ripped off 15 points. Indiana has three points to go for that. That was on a basket and a free throw. Other than that, they've got nothing to show in the last four minutes except that. Minnesota now shooting 68% on 15 of 22. Indiana is 7 of 18, 39%. And Doris Don, the big thing that you have to look at, Allen Henderson is not even playing, and Brian Evans has not even taken a shot yet. So neither of those have contributed anything offensively to the Indiana game. Henderson remains on the bench. Brian Evans does return to the lineup now with Mandeville and Lindemann. Sharon Wilkerson and Steve Hart is Damon Bailey, who's been Indiana's only scoring source for the most part thus far, is taking his first rest of this contest. The inbound comes to Sharon Wilkerson. Wilkerson falls down, picked up by Leonard, and a slam dunk. So Sean Leonard has his 16th point as everything that can go wrong right now is doing so for Indiana. And they're going to bring out a towel out of the floor and wipe up some perspiration where Sharon Bow. So Wilkerson falls down. The ball goes right into Bashan Leonard's hands, and he takes it in for a slam dunk. And the Hoosiers find themselves down 19. Minnesota is very effective with this trapping defense. They let him get it in bounds, and then when they get about the 10-second line, they get him really in trouble. Steve Hart will inbound for IU. Hart and... Minnesota, for whatever reason, detracts back into a They're going into zone. zone defense. They see what Indiana has out there long shooting-wise, I'm sure. And Brian Evans is perhaps the only three-point shooter of consistency in the lineup. Here is Sharon to Steve Hart. Hart brings it back to Brian Evans. Right side, he fires the jump shot. Got it. Brian Evans cans an 18-foot jumper, his first points of this ball game. 38-21, Minnesota. 5.50 to go, first half. Randy Carter with the basketball. Carter turns around, bounce pass out to Townsend Orr. He drives it left side, clears it away. It comes off to Bashan Leonard. Leonard brings it back to Colander. Colander goes to Grimm. Grimm to Orr. Orr, a three-point shot, good. 
Hands and arms. Got his first play of the ball game, his first points, and everything Minnesota's throwing up is going in, and they lead by their largest margin, 20. 41-21. Backcourt, Wilkerson to Hart. Hart spins right, looks, gives to Bryant Evans. Evans back outside to Wilkerson. Wilkerson looks in, goes to Hart on the right wing. Cross court pass to Evans, to Sharon. Wilkerson's three is no good. An air ball almost. It hit the backboard was all. And the rebound to Minnesota. Here is Townsend Orr. Inside pass comes away to Colander to Orr for another three. This time no, and Richard Mandeville's got the board. He bounces away to Wilkerson. Wilkerson across the timeline to Hart. Hart bounces to Mandeville in the lane, pulls up, fires, and got the roll. Mandeville, his sixth point. He ran into Colander, but the officials didn't call anything. 41-23, the Hoosiers down 18. Across the timeline, Townsend Orr. Orr gives to Leonard. Vashon right side pass to Randy Carter. Back to Leonard. Leonard holds high, now dribbles it. Looks right, takes it in the circle, gives to David Grimm on the left side. He brings it back out to Leonard. Right side to Orr. Orr's 18-foot jumper is good. Townsend Orr's got five, and the Hoosiers can't stop Minnesota's offense right now. Steve Hart takes it right, stops, looks, turns around, having trouble, finally up, threw it away. Grim fast break to Leonard. Leonard puts it up and in. But Sean Leonard's got 18. Timeout is called by Indiana. The score. Minnesota 45, Indiana 23 with 3.53 to go. The Gophers, the biggest lead of the game at 22. We'll be back in a moment. This is Indiana University basketball from Learfield Sports. At First of America Bank, we realize there are two things in life you never have enough of, time and money. Ironically, you spend almost all your time trying to make more money so you have more time. You go round and round, spending more time, making more money, and you never really seem to end up with more of either. But there is a way to get more of both. With Loan by Phone from First of America Bank, you can get more money without spending a lot of time. Because when you call 1-800-347-LOAN, you'll talk to a professional lender who can make a decision while you're on the line. You'll get competitive rates and flexible terms. Call First of America Bank today at 1-800-347-LOAN and get more time and more money. Who knows? It could start a whole new trend where you actually end up with enough of both. First of America Bank, a bank for life. Call us at 1-800-347-LOAN for your financial needs and we'll usually give you an answer while you're on the line. Loan by phone from First of America Bank. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Loan subject to credit approval. Well, back at Williams Arena in Minneapolis, Minnesota, dominating the Hoosiers in the first half. 22-point lead, 45-23, 3.53 to go in this first half of play. Hoosier basketball brought to you by Hooks Drug Stores. More of what a drug store is for. Well, Indiana has been able to score only seven points in the last seven minutes of play. And during that same period of time, the Minnesota Golden Gophers have scored 24. So it's been a 24-7 run. And the thing about it is, Don, that Leonard, who was the guy who was scoring for them early on, has now shared that with everybody. It doesn't make much difference who throws the ball up. Carter's four out of five. Walton's one out of two. Cole Anders hit both of his shots. Ariel McDonald is two out of three. Zigamazabo hit his only shot, and Orr has hit two out of three. So it doesn't make a lot of difference who puts the ball up for Minnesota. It's going through. And, of course, this is a team that set a new team record this year with three-point shots. And today they're lighting them up. Well, Bob Knight is making a point to Alan Henderson, it would seem. He remains on the bench, and Ross Hales has come in now. So Hales, Wilkerson, Steve Hart, Ryan Evans, and Todd Lindemann, the Hoosier lineup. They're across the timeline, the ball is batted out of bounds, and it'll belong to IU. Wilkerson. Got caught from behind, and the ball batted out, but Indiana will control it. The pass comes in to Steve Hart. Hart backs out, slides right with the pass to Brian Evans. Evans, top of the key, circles left, stops, gives to Ross Hales. Hales looks right, bounces to Lindemann, and it went right through his legs on the bound. The ninth Indiana turnover. 3.34 to go. Indiana is down 22. Tads and Orr. Uh, my apology, Ariel McDonald across the timeline. McDonald 
Moved to right. Bounces to David Grimm on the way. Grimm looks for Colander. Can't find him. And passes inside. New face in the game. It's stolen away. John Thomas checked in for the first time. And Ross Hales gets the steal. Hales gives outside to Wilkerson to Brian Evans. Evans on the left side baseline. Spins on the dribble. Gives to Sharon Wilkerson. He clears to Steve Hart. Hart. Goes back off to Brian Evans. Evans back to Lindemann. Lindemann down low. Turn around jump shot. No good. Almost an air ball. Or it was an air ball. And Grimm with a rebound. The other way, Ariel McDonald. Off to Colander. His jump shot. No good. Rebound inside. Out of bounds. It'll belong to Minnesota. Bob Knight is saying Grimm was all over. And Indiana players back. But he's not going to get the call. Lindemann will sit down and Mandeville comes in. Here's Ariel McDonald. The pass into Grimm. Grimm in backcourt. Gives it outside to Vashawn Leonard. 2.40 to go in the half. Leonard bounces to McDonald. Ariel, top of the key dribble. Looks it left. Backs it back out. Still directs some traffic. Moves it toward the right side on the perimeter. He'll slide it back outside to the left, takes it to the wing, pulls up and fires, and hits. Ariel McDonald with his foot on the line, his seventh point. 47-23, the Hoosiers are now down 24. Brian Evans looks inside, gives it to Ross Hales. He fires it up, and he misses an air ball. And the rebound of Minnesota. Down the floor, Ariel McDonald outside the Grimm, a three-point try, bingo. David Grimm with his first break, and Minnesota leads by 27. 149 left. Wilkerson to Brian Evans. Evans down low, fires and misses. The rebound, fought for, out of bounds, saved. Minnesota's Ariel McDonald to Cole Andrew and a break to Vashon Leonard, and he scores. Leonard has got 20. The Gophers lead it 52 to 23. A 29-point lead. 123 to go in the half. Brian Evans looks it outside. Gives it into Sharon. He gets the shot blocked for the foul. Colander will be nailed in the first. It'll be his second. 117 left. The Hoosiers are trailing 29 points. 52-23, it's by far and away the biggest lead any team has had this year. In fact, maybe any two teams have had against IU. I can't even remember a team in the past years that's had a 29-point lead at halftime. At the line is Sharon Wilkerson. Pat Knight has returned to the IU lineup now. Ross Hale sits down. And this Hoosier squad, who has obviously got some problems from an injury or a physical standpoint, has also got some problems elsewhere as Sharon fires the free one, no good. Remaining to sit, Alan Henderson has not played since early on. And Wilkerson's second shot is good. The first point for Wilkerson. The Hoosiers trail 52 to 24. Down the floor with a basketball, Towns and Orr back in for Minnesota. Zygamazabo's also in there, along with John Thomas. Here's the bounce pass. Walton gets it through Zygamazabo, back to Walton. Walton turns, block shot, and a foul. Brian Evans will be nailing this one. Evans has his first foul of the ball game. Well, this contest brought to you in part by Pursuit, Pursuit Herbicide for the highest degree of soybean weed control, proven, consistent, and unbeatable for no-till. 58.7 seconds remaining in this first half. Returning to the lineup is Todd Lindemann. Ryan Evans goes to the sideline. And at the stripe, Jason Walton. Walton fires up the first of two and connects. Walton's got his fourth point of the ball game. And Walton will have one more shot coming. It is 53-24. Indiana down 29 points. Walton trying to make it 30. The second shot is good. It's a 30-point Minnesota lead. Down the floor, Hart. Steve in backcourt on the dribble. Takes it right side to Sharon Wilkerson. He fakes, gets it inside to Lindemann. The ball gets lost. Pulled out of there by Jason Walton. 
Back down the floor, Minnesota. Townsend Orr, bats pass low to Zigamazabo. He turns and fires. It is no good. Rebound batted up, batted, battled four, and Wilkerson had it, knocked away, got it back. Sharon across the timeline. In backcourt. Knocked away again from behind, but it's picked up by Wilkerson. Ryan Wolf has checked in for Minnesota, the 6'3 junior out of Martinsville, Indiana. 21 seconds to go in the half. Here's the pass. Pat Knight, baseline drive, kicks it out, threw it away. Townsend Orr on the steal. Orr off to Zigamazabo in the lane. Four points for Zigamazabo. The lead is at 32. Three, two. Wilkerson fires at the horn and misses, and that's the end of the first half of play. And the misery for the first 20 minutes has ended for Indiana as they will go to the locker room trailing by an incredible 32 points. The score, Minnesota 56, Indiana 24. This ball game brought to you by Napa, Napa Auto Parts. We keep America running. And we'll be back to recap the first half scoring as we begin the Jeep Eagle Halftime Show. This is Indiana University Basketball from Learfield Sports. You can count on Hooks. You wanted more savings. Now Hooks gives you more. Hooks will double your manufacturer's coupons every day. Plus, we'll also honor our competitors' coupons at face value. That's two more ways to save. Get more of what you're shopping for for less. Only at Hooks. Hooks, more of what a drugstore is for. When you want more. The people at the Central Indiana Midas Shops are showing that there's a different way to get your car repaired. It's called the Midas Way. They properly diagnose the problem so the work is done right the first time. They fix only what needs to be fixed, give you their exclusive inspection, and thoroughly explain your options. They honor your Midas warranty without hassle. They prove that a car repair company can be professional, responsive, and caring. So see your Central Indiana Midas Shops for that different way to get your car repaired. The Midas Way. That's the way it should be. When some families buy insurance policies, they put them in a drawer and figure that's that. But State Farm agents know that as time goes by, things change. And the insurance that protected your family and your possession so well in the past might need to be updated. Ask your State Farm agent about a free family insurance checkup. There's no obligation. The advice is free and the decisions are all yours. So why not call your State Farm agent for your free checkup? This women's sports update is brought to you by State Farm Insurance, a major supporter of women's athletics. Indiana's women's basketball team took over sole possession of fourth place in the Big Ten with Friday night's 77-66 win over Northwestern at Assembly Hall. Now 7-6 and six in the Big Ten and 16-6 and six overall, the Hoosiers are still hoping for a postseason bid. The series sweep over Northwestern put the Wildcats in fifth in the Big Ten. Indiana's women are playing Illinois at Assembly Hall this afternoon. This update has been brought to you by State Farm Insurance, a major supporter Quarter of women's athletics. Well, back once again at Williams Arena. We are at halftime in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I must say, in a bit of a state of shock at this point, as Indiana's Hoosiers are trailing Minnesota. The score at halftime: the Gophers 56, Indiana 24. Let's take a look at the individual scoring in this first half of play. First of all, for Minnesota, Ariel McDonald has three field goals, one of them a three-pointer. He has seven first-half points, no fouls. But Sean Leonard was the big gun in the first half, although virtually everybody that came in, it seemed, was shooting it in the hole. But Sean Leonard had a tremendous first half of play. He had four, he had eight field goals. Three of those were three-point field goals. He had a free throw on top of that and 20 first-half points for Vashon Leonard. He did not pick up a foul. Chad Colander, a pair of field goals, four points, two fouls. Randy Carter, four field goals, eight points, two fouls. Jason Walton, a field goal and three free throws, five points and one foul. David Grimm, a three-point field goal, three points, one foul. Townsend Orr, a pair of field goals, one of them a three-pointer, and five first-half points, one personal foul. Ernest Zigamazabo, a pair of field goals, four points, and no fouls. John Thomas and Ryan Wolf both played briefly. Neither scored or fouled. 
So the Gophers at halftime led by Bashan Leonard with 20. For Indiana, Damon Bailey had the scoring hand for IU in the first half. He had two three-point field goals to go along with two regular field goals, and he hit three free throws in three tries, 13 first-half points for Damon Bailey and two personal fouls. Todd Leary did not score or foul. Alan Henderson did not score or foul. Todd Lindemann, a field goal for two points, two fouls. Steve Hart did not score, picked up one personal. Pat Knight did not score, nor did he foul. Ryan Evans with a field goal for two points and one foul. Sharon Wilkerson with a free throw, one point and no fouls. Richard Mandeville with three field goals, six points, one foul. And Ross Hales did not score, nor foul. So Indiana at halftime is led by Damon Bailey with 13. Max, look at those team stats. Well, they're not very pretty, Don. Indiana shot just 9 of 25 for 36%. The Minnesota Golden Gophers shot 23 of 33, 69.6. Minnesota scored 23, uh, or hit 23 shots. That's just two less than Indiana took totally. But 23 of 33 is an astounding shooting percentage for this first half. Three-point range, Indiana was 2 of 5, 40%, while the Gophers were 6 of 13, 46%. Indiana 4 of 5 from the free throw line, Minnesota 4 of 4. Turnovers, Indiana 11, Minnesota 4. We'll pick up on the rebounding a little later, but when you look at Minnesota shooting, there weren't very many rebounds in this game, as Ariel Leonard was 8 of 11 in that first half. Randy Carter 4 of 5. Damon Bailey was 4 of 7. He was the only one that really contributed to anything, although Mandeville did hit three out of six. Well, Max will return with today's Hook Strike Store halftime guest in a moment. You're listening to Indiana University Basketball. This is a story about American heroes. They changed quite a few lives last year. Jorge Vasquez put out fires, but no, he's not a firefighter. Philip Dale discovered several new stars. Oh, he's not an astronomer. And Elaine Capobianco, she saved a child from drowning, but she's not a lifeguard. They're teachers, but to the kids they've reached, they're heroes. I'm a teacher. The children are the heroes. We're, we're not just teaching subject matter, we're teaching human beings. I am tough as nails, but they know that I love them. I mean, we've got a legacy that follows behind us forever. Teachers have the power to make an impact on our future. Reach for that power. Teach. Find out how by calling 1-800-45-TEACH. Be a teacher. Be a hero. 1-800-45-TEACH. A public service message brought to you by Recruiting New Teachers, the Ad Council, and this station. Serbs Tire at 210 North Walnut is your one-stop automotive shop with Cooper Tires, the American-made and owned tire with nationwide warranties. And with the addition of top mechanic Ben Gleason, Serbs Tire is able to expand their automotive services. Brake and shock work, transmission, oil changes, and of course, Cooper Tires. Serbs Tire at 210 North Walnut, open Monday through Friday 8 to 6 and Saturdays 8 to 4, or call 362-0279. If you're a homeowner, Thompson Hopper & Associates knows you probably have homeowner's insurance. But is everything in your home fully covered? Jewelry, antiques, cash, coin collections, musical instruments, guns? If they're worth over $250, you may not get full value in the event of loss. Almost everyone has something at home that isn't fully covered by insurance, so don't assume you're adequately covered. Call Thompson Hopper & Associates. Talk to them about it. Thompson Hopper & Associates. Good guys with a good name. Built on good insurance service. Our halftime to guest yesterday is Bob Morgan, the baseball coach at Indiana University. And Bob, uh, this is the weekend that baseball is supposed to be getting underway, and hopefully the weather is going to permit you to get a game or two in. Hopefully it will, Max. Uh, at this time of year, it's, it's a hit-and-miss type of thing. If we can get some games in early before we head to Florida and before the Big Four Classic in Louisville, it only helps our kids. And so uh, we hope we're ready to play and hope we can get a little weather so we can do that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, these early games. Uh, you try to start them around the 1st of March. Uh, do you really get a lot of benefit out of that? The weather is often so cold. 
Well, true, Max. Uh, last week it was beautiful if we had some games scheduled then, but it, it's kind of a hit and miss type thing. But in the in the climates we have, we only have so many months and so many weeks to, to, to play games, so we have to try to get them in. And sometimes you're right, 35, 40 degrees, you wonder what you're getting out of it, but in this type of climate you have to do so. And so we try to get some games in, and, and it helps us, yes. How many games do you play a year now? Uh, NCAA limits 56 games, so we play 56. And you're going down to Florida when? Uh, we go spring break. That would be March 11th through uh, March 20th, and uh, we'll play eight games down there. Where will you be going? We'll be Fort Myers, Florida. We'll, we'll be stationed there, and uh, we'll have eight games. We'll play at the Kansas City Complex. It's a triple-A ballpark. It's a beautiful field. Several colleges be in there? Yes, there's a lot of Division three and two, but we just we're just going to play Division one schools, and uh, a lot of schools go down there at that time. Let's talk a little bit about your baseball team. How do you feel this year? Max, we don't have a lot of depth this year. We feel we can put a, uh, a solid team out on the field, uh, but depth is going to be a problem, so let's hope we don't have a lot of injuries because I think we'll have trouble absorbing some injuries. Uh, we'll be led on the mound by Bob Scaffa, who made the All-USA team last year when his first team All-Big Ten. Uh, he's, he should lead us on the mound. Behind him, we have some good arms, but they're, they're not proven, so they have to go out and step up and do a job for us at the Division One level. At first base, we have Jason Cotton back. He should be a good player for us. Scott Sellers, a senior at second. Uh, Kyle Kramer or Jason Durbin at um, shortstop. A freshman, Mike Crotty at third base. Matt Brocker, a sophomore catcher. So we do have some kids that have experience, uh, but yet we're not a, a real veteran team. We, we lost three uh, juniors last year that signed pro contracts. Seems when they get to be a junior, we lose them. What about hitting? Do you have a good hitting team, do you think? Uh, we lost a great player in Kevin Ory last year who was a, a sandwich pick between the first and second round with the Cubs. And uh, We have some solid hitters. I think two through seven we can be a solid hitting team. No great hitters, but some solid hitters. And then our, our leadoff kid in eight and nine, they've just got to get on base, set the table for us, and two through seven has got to drive people in. But I think we have some kids that are going to step up and get a chance and opportunity, and I think we can be a good hitting team. What about speed? Well, we have a few kids that can run, uh, and we do like to play an up-tempo game and, and do like to run and be very aggressive offensively. But we have three or four kids that can be in the lineup that are going to be able to steal some bases for us, and uh, we do like to do that. What about your winter program? What do you do with baseball now? Well, we've been practicing in the field house, Max. We have three batting cages, six portable mounds, a full infield area there. And that new facility for the football is going to help us, too, because uh, we'll be able to practice in there. But we have a real good uh, uh, workout in the field house, and we can do everything in there except basically play a game. And then we've had some nice days. We go down to the football stadium and play games and work out on drills and in the, on the AstroTurf. And that works out really well for us. Do you have a running and lifting program in the winter? Yeah, we sure do. We we uh, we lift three times a week, and uh, then we have a, a speed development program, stretching type program, and speed development that we do with our kids uh, twice a week. So we we incorporate that, and we do it throughout our season also to try to maintain our skills at the highest level. At the same time, maintain our strength up there. Uh, quickly, where do you think you're going to end up in the Big Ten? What would you guess at this point? Oh, I'll tell you what, Max, that's a tough question. Last year, I didn't think we were very talented at all. We had a, a team that was just uh, played within their roles very well and just did an outstanding job. We were third. I'd like to hope that we could get back to the playoffs again. Whether we're going to be talented enough to do that, a lot's going to do with the injury type things, but we're planning on trying to be back in the playoffs again. Bob, appreciate very much your talking with us, and uh, good luck to you this year. Thank you very much, Max. Back. Well, here, here at halftime, Indiana trails the Minnesota Golden Gophers 56 to 24, Don, and the Hoosiers have a real uphill battle as they were outscored 35 to 8 in the last 11 minutes of that half. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to Indiana University basketball. Our guests at halftime receive a gift certificate from D-Dance Gentlemen's and Ladies Clothier of Indianapolis. D-Dance has updated classic clothing, sportswear, and accessories for men and women. Right now, of course, they're continuing their last chance sale. It's your last opportunity to save on all fall and winter clothing. Some great buys at D-Dance Clothing to complement your lifestyle on West 86th Street at Township Line Road on the North Willow Mall in Indianapolis. 
We will be back with the start of the second half of this basketball game in just a couple of minutes. This is Indiana University Basketball from Learfield Sports. Just met the young folks who bought the farmhouse next door. They're from the city. He was wiring in a hot tub spa, and she asked me if I was a member of the REMC club. <laughs> I had to laugh. Told her that I was here in 36 when the co-op first strung wire to the farm, and that REMC's been better than a power company all these years. More like a neighbor. They'll do okay out here, these two, because they understand. With electricity, the country's as nice as the city. Only better. Thank you, REMC. Hey, sports fans, play new Hoosier Bingo from the Hoosier Lottery. Here's how it works. You just scratch off the caller's card section on the left side of the ticket and rub the matching bingo numbers off on the four bingo cards on the right side. In all, there are 56 chances to win on every ticket. Top prize is $10,000. What easier way to win fast money? Play new Hoosier Bingo today from the Hoosier Lottery. Remember, you got to play to win. I'm Bill Compton, head of the Airline Pilots Association for TWA and a member of our new Labor Advisory Committee. All the employees got together to prepare a message about TWA's new attitude. But then we thought, who better to speak about TWA than the passengers themselves? And this is the first time that I've seen an airline take a step for customer satisfaction other than getting you from point A to point B. TWA is obviously more concerned with their clientele's well-being and their accommodations, their comfort. At TWA, we have 25,000 dedicated professionals who have your best interest in mind. We're all part of a participative management committed to making TWA the most comfortable way to fly. We're so committed, we voluntarily contributed our own money to bring you this message. That's why our passengers have a lot to say. TWA is listening to the passengers, reserving what the passengers want and need. Once again, at Minneapolis, Minnesota, Indiana is trailing Minnesota 56 to 24 as we're about to get the second half of basketball underway. Bob Knight is obviously sending a message back. Alan Henderson remains on the bench. Damon Bailey is not coming out to start the second half. Todd Leary won't either. So three of the starters in the first half are remaining on the sidelines to start the second half of play. And this basketball game right now appears totally out of hand from Indiana's standpoint. Well, Alan Henderson played only six minutes in that first half, so he didn't see much action in the half, and it would appear he's not going to be back today at all. On the floor will be Steve Hart, Pat Knight, Sharon Wilkerson, Todd Lindemann, and I believe Richard Mandeville. Ryan Evans also sitting down. And Robert is obviously passing along a message to his ball club. Defense is going to be a primary concern with this team the remainder of the season. I know that's something he stressed prior to the start of today's ball game. We talked about it in the pregame show with him. And uh, it's something that's going to be paid attention to. There's no question about it, but it doesn't look like it in the first half. Well, we've got Henderson and uh, Evans both down at the far end of the bench. That, I guess, tells you something. Out of the floor, Indiana will have the basketball start the second half, trailing by 32. And we are about ready. The officials indicate we are. And Ed Hightower will hand the basketball to Pat Knight. He fires it into Steve Hart. Hart has it in backcourt. Hart goes right side to Pat Knight. Back to Steve Hart. Left side to Sharon Wilkerson. Goes baseline to Knight. Knight spins, turns, looks for help, threw it away. And it's picked off in there by Grimm. A fast break basket to Bashan Leonard, and he slams it home. 22 points for Bashan Leonard. Here is Steve Hart. Right side to Sharon Wilkerson. Wilkerson circles it out to Pat Knight, who goes left to Todd Lindemann, who pumps up a 17-footer. It's off the rim, no, and the rebound to Ariel McDonald. And another fast break, and another easy slam dunk for David Grimm. He's got five. The Hoosiers are trailing 60 to 24. Now, Wilkerson in backcourt. Sharon to Pat Knight on the right side. 
Looks slow, can't find Hart, brings it out to Richard Mandeville. Mandeville turns around, gives back to Knight. Knight, right side of the circle, gives it off to Steve Hart. Long three-pointer going. Steve Hart gets Indiana's first second-half basket and his first points of the ball game. And Indiana's down 60 to 27. The Hoosiers, with 18.45 to go in this one, have trailed by 36 points. And that was just a basket to go. Here is Randy Carter to Ariel McDonald in backcourt. Indiana has dropped into a zone defense, a 2-3 zone. McDonald goes right side to Grimm. Grimm outside to Vashon Leonard. Left side to Ariel McDonald. McDonald back out to David Grimm, who goes to Leonard. Leonard. Tries to take it in, goes to McDonald, who pumps the tray. No good. Rebound, Richard Mandeville. Mandeville clears to Sharon Wilkerson. Up court to Steve Hart. Hart holds, goes outside to Mandeville, down the lane. The ball stripped away, picked off by Minnesota. Here is McDonald back the other way, pulls up, and a blocking foul is called on Indiana. Here comes Ross Hales off the bench. Hales will come into the ball game. Mandeville will sit down. And Ariel McDonald, I believe, going to the line for Minnesota. The foul call against IU was on Steve Hart. Well, let's check it. I don't know. I could never hear who he said. I think Hart was nailed on it. We'll put it down for Steve. The free throw by McDonald is good, and Ariel McDonald's got his eighth point of the ball game. One more shot coming. Up it goes, and it's good. McDonald has his ninth point. Now it is 62-27. Steve Hart across the timeline. Spins, cross courts to Pat Knight. Gets it inside to Ross Hales, back to Pat. Pat cross courts it and threw it away again. Batted out of bounds this time by Randy Carter. And Minnesota will have, or rather Indiana will have the ball back. Here is Hart. Takes it to the right side. Looks, bounces it into Todd Lindemann and a whistle. We got a foul called against Minnesota. And Chad Colander, I believe, will be nailed on this one. That would be his third. 17.41 to go. The Hoosiers are 62-27. Trailer in this ball game. As Minnesota has ran rough shot over IU, here's Steve Hart, pulls up, gives it up to Sharon Wilkerson, baseline to Hales. Ross turns around, clears it out to Pat Knight. Knight drives it left, fires up a jump shot around the rim, and it fell in. He got the roll and circled completely, and Pat gets his first two of the game. 62-29. Here is Minnesota on top to Grimm. Now off left side comes to McDonald. Or rather, Vashon Leonard now gets it out to Grimm to McDonald in the right wing. Ariel McDonald outside of Leonard. A Leonard three-pointer is good. Vashon Leonard now with his 25th point of the game, and he's got four three-pointers in this one. 65-29. Here's Pat Knight inside the heart. Down low, fires it up, missed the shot, tipped up no. Tipped to Lindemann, Lindemann back up, and he got in the foul. Todd Lindemann. Scores the basket. That will be his fourth point of the ball game and a chance at a three-point play. The foul call is on Colander, and suddenly Chad Colander has four fouls. He goes to the sideline. Nope, he's still in there, but he will go to the sideline now as John Thomas checks into the game, replacing Colander. And Tazanor is in for Ariel McDonald. So Todd Lindemann goes to the free throw stripe, looking for one shot. He fires it up, and he drops it. He's got five, and the Hoosiers now trail 65 to 32. And official stop play here for a moment. But if you're looking for the best deal on a new car or truck, check out your Central Indiana Dodge dealer, a proud sponsor of Indiana basketball. We know how to help. Something happened under the basket in the, the stands that Jim Burr got on some of the fans. I'm not sure what that was about. So Minnesota will have a basketball. Grimm inbounds. It comes into Tazador, and Orr will bring it up the court. Orr across the timeline. He passes it off to Grimm. Grimm in backcourt. Looks, gives it to Leonard. Bashan to Townsend. Down to the corner to Randy Carter. Carter brings it back to Orr. 
Orr circles in backcourt, gives to Grimm. Right side in the corner to Leonard. Leonard holds, gives it back outside to Carter. Cross courts to Grimm for a three try, and it is good. David Grimm has his eighth point of the ball game, his second three. And another steal, and Bashan Leonard scores another two pointer. Leonard's got 27. The lead is at 70 to 32. Indiana is down 38 points. Here's the pass inside, batted away again. They're going to call a foul this time. Indiana will get the benefit there. Pat Knight tried to get it into Ross Hales and didn't get it done. But the ball, there was a foul called on Randy Carter. So he's got his third. Here's Sharon Wilkerson driving and missing an air ball. Hales tried to save it and couldn't get it done. Back up the floor comes Minnesota. Backcourt left side, Townsend or Vashon Leonard, another three. 30 points for Vashon Leonard. It's 73-32. The Hoosiers are trailing by 41 points. Here's Steve Hart. Outside to Sharon Wilkerson. Wilkerson in backcourt almost has it stolen away to Pat Knight. He fires up a long one and got it. Pat Knight. Grabs his fourth point of the ball game at 73 to 34. 15, 25 to go. Indiana getting clobbered. Here is Carter outside to Orr. Top of the key to Grimm. Back off to Orr. Down low to Carter. Carter back out to Grimm. Now to Leonard. Another three. Bingo. But Sean Leonard has 33. That's his sixth three-pointer. 76 to 34. Rashawn Leonard has loved seeing the zone. Here is Pat Knight on the dribble. Back out to Sharon Wilkerson. To Pat Knight, he fires up another, and this one's no good. Rebound knocked away to Hales. Ross outside to Steve Hart. He fires up a three. He misses. Rebound batted away. Pat Knight tried to save it, couldn't get it done. Indiana gives up the ball. Timeout is called, and the score reads Minnesota 76, Indiana 34. 14.42 left, and we'll be back after this 60-second break. You're listening to Indiana University Basketball. I want to try chiropractic for my back pain and headaches, but I'm scared and not sure it will even help. Chiropractic care doesn't have to be fearful. At the Russell Chiropractic Clinic, they have over 15 years' experience. Dr. Russell knows if chiropractic treatment is what you need. If he can't help you, he'll refer you to the proper specialist. Russell Chiropractic, gentle, painless care for back and neck problems. Honesty, integrity, and experience all in a doctor who cares. 407 East Market Street behind Rightway Fitness Center, 362-1111. Serbs Tire at 210 North Walnut is your one-stop automotive shop with Cooper Tires, the American-made and owned tire with nationwide warranties. And with the addition of top mechanic Ben Gleason, Serbs Tire is able to expand their automotive services. Brake and shock work, transmission, oil changes, and of course, Cooper Tires. Serbs Tire at 210 North Walnut, open Monday through Friday 8 to 6 and Saturdays 8 to 4, or call 362-0279. At Williams Arena in Minneapolis, Minnesota. 14.42 to go. And Minnesota clobbering the Hoosiers 76 to 34. This game brought to you by State Farm Insurance and the more than 500 State Farm agents throughout Indiana. For all your family insurance needs, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Well, Don, it isn't as in, uh, if Indiana is, uh, you know, shooting 10% or 15%. Or this half, they've hit four out of nine, 44%. The problem is Minnesota's hit seven out of eight in this half, 87%. And that goes along with that shooting they had in the first half in which they hit uh, 69%. So they've even bumped it up a bit farther than they had uh, as far as shooting was concerned in the first half. They are in a zone, as you say, and uh, Indiana with the lineup that uh, is being used now is going to have to struggle. I'm not sure this ball club that's out there now could score 35 points and a half. Well, they are struggling to say the least. And Bob Knight is obviously making a point with his own ball club. There is no question about it. It's almost reminiscent back to the ball game back in, what was it, 85-86 season uh, or the 84-85 season when he sat down everybody except for the four freshmen and Uwe Blanc. That's right. I don't remember what year it was, but uh, it was the same kind of thing except this score may be even worse. Well, the score is worse. There's no question about that. 76-34, a 42-point lead for Minnesota. Leonard 
Gets it in to Ernest Zigamazamo. Back to Jason Walton. Now off right side to Townsend Orr. Orr fires up a tray and cans it. Townsend Orr has got his eighth point of the ball game, his second three. 79-34. Indiana blitzed by 45. Wilkerson into Mandeville. He turns low to Pat Knight. Baseline. Pat fires it up. Missed the shot. Rebound pulled out of there by Wilkerson. Sharon fires it backcourt. Pat Knight pulls it in. He goes left to Sharon. Wilkerson fakes. He drives in the lane. Gives it back to Knight. Knight on the right wing. Fires it inside. Had it blocked away and it's stolen by Minnesota. Here's a break for Sean Leonard to Jason Wolf. Seventh point for Wolf. It's 81-34. Here is Wilkerson. Sharon almost fell. Gives it to Pat Knight. Knight now brings it back outside. Pat looks in, gives to Steve Hart. Hart to Todd Lindemann. He turns, one dribble, fires the fade away, an air ball, knocked out of bounds. Minnesota will have it. Nope, it'll be Indiana ball. 13-22 left in this one. And Pat Knight will inbound. He looks, fires it into Lindemann. Todd gets it to Mandeville. Down low, jump shot, good. Richard Mandeville scores his eighth point. 81-36, Minnesota's ball. Backcourt Leonard to Townsend Orr to John Thomas. Thomas goes right side. The pass comes away to Ziga Mazabo. Now to Orr, three-pointer, off the mark, no. Rebound batted out, scramble four. Picked off in there by Leonard. Again to Townsend Orr. Orr goes left to Walton, down low baseline to Thomas. His jump shot is no good. Rebound batted away to Zigamazabo. He scores and a foul. <laughs> foul call will go against IU, and I have yep, to put it on Sharon Wilkerson. That'll be Sharon's first foul of the ball game. And going to the free throw line will be Minnesota. Ernest Zigamazabo, who scored his sixth point of the ball game now, has a chance for a three-point play. With 12.50 to go, it's Minnesota 83, Indiana 36. The shot is good. Zigamazabo has seven. Sharon Wilkerson inbounds to Steve Hart. Hart turns around, looks up court, takes the ball, jumps it away to Sharon Wilkerson across the timeline. Wilkerson in backcourt. Starts it to the right side. Takes it to the wing, to the baseline to Hart. Steve into Lindemann. The ball knocked away, out of bounds. It'll belong to IU. Todd couldn't hang on. The ball batted away, but the Hoosiers get the basketball out of bounds as Pat Knight will trigger it in. Knight, backcourt to Sharon Wilkerson. Left side to Hart. Steve Hart. Gives it out to, Grant, to Knight. Now off to Mandeville, who misses the shot. Rebound Wilkerson back inside, and he draws the foul. Here comes Todd Leary off the bench. Leary will check into the Hoosier lineup momentarily. And two faces for Minnesota coming in. Well, Leary will give him a little bit more of a scoring punch in there. He can light up things if he can get things started out here. Randy Carter comes back in. Ryan Wolf checks in for Minnesota. Uh, as we look up, the foul call, I believe, was on Jason Walton. No, it wasn't him. At the line is Sharon Wilkerson. Wilkerson with one point of the ball game on a first half free throw, and now he's got his second of the afternoon. He'll have one more shot coming. 84-37, the score. Minnesota, 12-24 to go. Wilkerson eyes the second, and he cans it. Wilkerson with his third point of the ball game, and the Hoosiers are down 84-38. Wilkerson sits down, Todd Leary checks in. Up the floor, Ariel McDonald with the basketball. McDonald... Holds up three fingers, gets the pass to Carter, now to Walton, baseline jump shot, no good, rebound pulled out of there by Pat Knight. Down the floor of the Hoosiers. Knight, backcourt to Todd Leary. Leary spins to the left, goes right, gets to Mandeville in the lane, he pulls up, fires it, missed it, and the rebound to Randy Carter. Back the other way, Ariel McDonald, nice steal by Mandeville, but it's not able to save. 
for Indiana. So Minnesota will have it out of bounds. We got a timeout call. Score. Minnesota 84, Indiana 38, 1149 left in this one. We'll be back after the 60 second break. This is Indiana University basketball from Learfield Sports. When you check out the new Dodge Ram pickup, bring your whole office. There's room for a laptop computer and a cellular phone in our new fold-down center console. And room behind the seats for a briefcase, toolbox, and more, thanks to another convenient option. An ingenious storage system with a divided tray, interchangeable bins, and cargo netting. All this office space and a great view, too. New Dodge Ram pickup. The rules have changed. It's Indiana trailing Minnesota 84 to 38 with 11.49 to go in this final half of play. Fans, hold on to your seats for this week's official game update brought to you by your own Hoosier Lottery. Lotto Cash is now $2 million. All cash paid to you all at once. Powerball is also an estimated $2 million this week. Remember, someone's going to win, and it might as well be you. So play Lotto Cash and Powerball right here in Indiana. Minnesota now hitting 10 of 13 this half. They've uh, cooled off slightly from their 7 of 8. If I may be a little facetious, and I can't think of anything else to be after Indiana uh, pounding their take. And the other thing, Don, I was trying to uh, search our record books to see if Indiana had been involved in this kind of a score. Unfortunately, uh, I don't have time to go all the way back through history because it's going to go a long way back to see this kind of a score. 11.49 to go. The Hoosiers are down 46. Mandeville Lindemann, Pat Knight, Todd Leary, and Steve Hart, the lineup on the floor for IU. Alan Henderson has seen six minutes of playing time at the outset of this ball game today, then sat down. Bob Knight admonished him, I believe, for defensive, from a defensive purpose standpoint, and he has not been back out of the floor. Brian Evans sat down much of the first half after he got off to a slow start. Likewise, Damon Bailey, who got off to a quick start with 13 first-half points, has not seen action in the latter stages of the first half, nor has he been in in the second half of this ball game. The only two starters in this contest right now are Leary and Lindemann, and Leary didn't see much action here in the second half until, just until a moment ago. Here's Zygamazabo for Minnesota, cross-courts to Ryan Wolf. Wolf brings it back outside to McDonald. McDonald slides it right, fires the jump shot, missed it badly, and the ball out of bounds. It'll belong to IU. So the Hoosiers will have it with 11-20 left. Pat Knight in bounds. It comes to Todd Leary. Leary brings it up the court. Todd across the timeline. Starts it to the left side, pulls back to the right, bounces it long into Todd Lindemann, who fires the jumper and got it. Todd Lindemann's got Lindemann. seven points now. And it's 84-40. Here's the pass outside. McDonald to Zygamazabo to Carter. Carter on the left side. Back out he comes to Ryan Wolf. Wolf back off to McDonald. Lobs it low to Zygamazabo. He cross courts out to Ryan Wolf. Wolf back outside to McDonald. McDonald drives it right. Pulls up. Bats pass to Carter. Indiana stays in the 2-3 zone. In backcourt, McDonald top of the key. On the dribble now, gives it left to Wolf, back to McDonald, shot clock's down to five, off to Ryan Wolf, he throws up the three, and he missed it, and the rebound comes long to Pat Knight. Knight has it, up the court to Todd Leary. Leary, on the right wing, stops and looks in, comes outside to Pat Knight. Knight now slides it left in the dribble, gives it to Richard Mandeville, down low to Man Lindemann, he fires the jump shot, he misses the rebound, Mandeville, tried to save it, bats it off a Minnesota leg, picked up by McDonald. McDonald takes it into the break, pulls up, fires a whistle. His shot will not count. The foul's called on Todd Leary. So Leary will be nailed on the personal. That will be the first of the day on Todd. And Vashon Leonard will recheck into the lineup for Minnesota as Ryan Wolf will go to the sideline. 10 away left. Inbounds pass will come from Ariel McDonald. He gets it into Jason Walton. 
He fires it outside to Vashon Leonard, who goes to McDonald. McDonald baseline drive, pulls it back out of there. It's knocked away, picked up by McDonald. McDonald, left side to Walton. Walton looks left in the wing. Pulls it back out to Carter. Carter into McDonald. He fires it underneath to Ziga Mazabo and a give and go, and he scores and a foul. Ziga Mazabo gets his ninth point of the game, and he will have a chance at the free throw line for another three-point play. Steve Hart will sit out for IU. Sharon Wilkerson comes in. And Richard Mandeville called for that foul, his second of the ball game. Zigamazabo at the free throw stripe with 9.47 left. And he pops it home. Minnesota by 47 now as Zigamazabo has his 10th point. Todd Leary, backcourt to Sharon Wilkerson. Wilkerson brings it up the court across the midcourt stripe. Sharon in backcourt. Works on Vashon Leonard, gives to Pat Knight. Knight left wing down low to Lindemann. Lindemann turns, clears back to Knight. Knight fires a 15-footer, missed it. Rebound to Leary. Todd Leary pulls it back out, fires up a long one, and he cans it. Todd Leary has his first two of the ball game. 87-42. Up the court with Sean Leonard. Passes left side. It goes to Jason Walton. Walton holds on, turns it out to Randy Carter. Now he goes to McDonald. McDonald top of the key. Ariel McDonald backs it out, flies it left to Carter, down low to Leonard. Leonard back outside to McDonald. Minnesota's starting to stand a little bit, and I'm sure that's in, not in stark contrast to what we're seeing here from an intensity standpoint. How could you be intense with a 40-some point lead? Walton fires and hits. Walton's got nine. They remain patient and score the two-pointer. 89 to 42. Here's Todd Leary to the left wing. Gets it down low to Lindemann. Lindemann baseline. Back out to Leary. Leary fires a three and couldn't get the roll. Rebound comes off to Randy Carter. To McDonald. Bounce low right. Comes off to Ziga Mazabel. He threw it. Uh, it was knocked out of bounds by IU. Don, I think the zone defense is causing Minnesota to do a little standing out there also. The other thing to kind of observe here is Minnesota with right now with a, what, a 47-point lead? They've still got their starters in. They're bringing Colander back in again. I'm not sure uh, Coach Knight would do that if he were up by 47. I think he'd have almost everybody on the bench by now. 8.24 to go. Inbound pass. Jason Walton couldn't get the slam on the alley-oop, but they got the rebound anyway, and Minnesota resets the offense. Here's McDonald. Right side to Walton. Baseline. Fires it up. Missed it. Rebound Carter. Back up and in. Randy Carter got 10. 91 to 42. And it's a 49-point Minnesota lead. Their largest. Todd Leary into Todd Lindemann. Lindemann fires and got the roll. Todd Lindemann's got nine. 91 to 44. Minnesota leads Indiana with 7.50 to go. Right side pass down low, comes off to Carter. Carter turns around and clears it inside. It goes to McDonald up and in. That's 11 now for Ariel McDonald. Here is Todd Leary. Backcourt dribble. Starts it toward the right side. Takes it down. Stops. Looks low. Clears it out to Sharon. Wilkerson takes it to the left side of the circle. Back out to Leary. Leary looks in. Comes out to Ross Hales. Hales goes to Pat Knight. Knight down low to Lindemann. Turns. Back out to Knight. Knight looks at low. Takes it in. Scoop shot no. Rebound to Zigabaza, or rather to Colander. Chad Colander up the floor to Vashon Leonard. Right side pass to Carter. Back out to Colander. Left side to Jason Walton. Walton now circles it back out. Gives it left to McDonald in the corner. Ariel. On the wing, outside the Leonard, three-pointer on the way. It's no good, and the rebound comes off to Pat Knight. Three-on-three three break. Pat Knight slows it down, spins, gives out to Todd Leary. He drives it inside, pulls up, no, but a foul. And I think Chad Colander just fouled out of the ballgame. Colander will leave as he finishes his afternoon's work with four points. And so... Todd Leary will go to the line as Colander leaves the ball game, and he leaves to a standing ovation. Well, at Midas, inspections are free. In addition to complete exhaust work, they do foreign and domestic car and truck breaks. 
Stop Interco, your local Midas shop for an appointment. Try the Midas way, the way it should be. Well, Colander has not had a couple of good games against Indiana this year. He's just two of three this afternoon. He had only two points in the first game when he hit just one out of six. Two shots coming to Todd Leary, the first of which is no good. One more shot coming to him. That's the first miss of the day from the free throw line by IU. And it's Leary's second of the season. And he hits that when he's got three. And timeout call with a score. Minnesota 93, Indiana 45, 640 to go in this one. And we'll be back. You're listening to Indiana University Basketball. In Indiana, it's the law. If you drive a vehicle, you must be financially responsible. But Thompson Hopper & Associates remind you many automobile insurance policies won't cover all your expenses, even if you've had the same policy for years. For example, has the liability portion of your policy kept up with inflation? If not, you could lose far more than the cost of your vehicle. Don't assume you're adequately covered. Call Thompson Hopper & Associates and talk to them. Thompson Hopper & Associates, good guys with a good name, built on good insurance service. Serbs Tire at 210 North Walnut is your one-stop automotive shop with Cooper Tires, the American-made and owned tire with nationwide warranties. And with the addition of top mechanic Ben Gleason, Serbs Tire is able to expand their automotive services. Brake and shock work, transmission, oil changes, and of course, Cooper Tires. Serbs Tire at 210 North Walnut, open Monday through Friday 8 to 6 and Saturdays 8 to 4, or call 362-0279. Minneapolis, Minnesota. Indiana is trailing Minnesota 93 to 45. We have 640 left in this one. And if you just joined us, you're probably undergoing culture shock at this point. IU basketball brought to you in part over a statewide network of radio stations from Learfield Sports, numbering over 50 strong, including WKAM in Goshen, WIBN in Oxford, WTRE in Greensburg, and WRAY in Princeton, a brand new affiliate to the IU network. Welcome to our broadcast. We know you're not enjoying it all that much this afternoon, but nevertheless, we appreciate the fact that you've joined us here today. Well, Don, I'm trying, still checking through the record books as, uh, as best I can during these timeouts, and I'm back to 1977, and there's, that was the year, of course, Indiana took it on the chin quite a bit after they had been undefeated the previous year, and there's no scoring of any kind even similar to this, so I'm sure this is absolutely the worst uh, scoring difference in Bob Knight's history at Indiana University. 6.40 left in this ball game. Indiana is getting blown away this afternoon, as it has been the case since early on in the first half. The Hoosiers simply not being able to hang with Minnesota today. They had a tremendous shooting performance in the first half, and Bob Knight is obviously out to prove to his players that you're going to play defense if you're going to play basketball at IU. At least that's the assumption here. We'll have to wait for Norm Ellenberger's assessment in our postgame show to give you the true factual situation of what has happened in this ball game and what has gone on. Here is Ariel McDonald to Randy Carter, inside to John Thomas, who gets it inside to Townsend Orr, or rather Vashon Leonard, who tried to score and was found. Todd Lindemann will be nailed on the personal. That will be his third of the afternoon. I think we ought to point out that Damon Bailey, I don't think Max, is, I'm not sure anybody uh, or who at this point is being taught a lesson here, but Alan Henderson is the most obvious, so there's no question about that, because he has not played since six minutes gone by in the first half, and as Leonard cans another free one, and all, obviously all we're doing here is we probably shouldn't speculate on what the situation is calling for from Bob Knight's standpoint, but obviously he's trying to prove a point to us, to some players on the team. 35 now for Leonard as he hits the second, and it's a 50-point margin in this ball game. Todd Leary, backcourt to Sharon Wilkerson. Wilkerson to Pat Knight. Knight stops and looks, gets it down low, and it's thrown away again. Stolen by Jason Walton to Vashon Leonard. Leonard cross courts it off to Carter. Baseline to Walton, back inside, now outside to McDonald. Back across to Walton underneath, and he puts it up. He's fouled by Todd Lindemann, and that's number four. Lindemann now has four personals, and Minnesota will have Jason Walton going to the free throw line. 5.45 left 
Indiana is down 50 points, 95 to 45. At the free throw stripe, Jason Walton. They have not missed a free throw all day either. Walton has nine points in the ball game, and he's got his 10th. One more shot coming to him. He is a 66% free throw shooter on the season, 70% in Big Ten play. If he hits this, it'll reach a new plateau. They've, they have led by 51 on two occasions. And he got it. 11 now for Walton. And here is Todd Leary bringing it up the floor for IU. Leary across the timeline. Takes it left side, bounced it low for Lindemann, and he couldn't catch up to it. The pass was a little bit wide, and that's the 17th turnover for IU. Minnesota with Ariel McDonald bringing it up, and Leary now is putting on some full-court pressures. The Hoosiers have relinquished the zone, and they've gone to man-to-man. -to -man. Here is Randy Carter outside to McDonald. McDonald circles it toward the right to Vashawn Leonard. Leonard back out to McDonald. He drives, pulls up, kicks it out to Leonard. Leonard fakes, drives it inside, and slams in to Todd Lindemann. Vashawn Leonard will be called for the foul. Leonard with 35 points this afternoon, and now he has his first foul of the day. That's the first turnover of a Minnesota this half. Here's Todd Leary to Sharon Wilkerson. Wilkerson drives it left to Pat Knight. Pat brings it back out across the key, fires it off to Todd Leary. Leary brings it outside to Knight. Knight holds, looks inside, pulls it back out, gives it off to Sharon Wilkerson. Wilkerson slides it back out top of the key to Pat Knight. Knight gives it off to Todd Leary for a bomb it's no good rebound pulled out of there by Minnesota's Walton and a foul call on Sharon Wilkerson that'll be Sharon being nailed for his second of the afternoon and they'll go to the other end for I believe one and one I know they got a big nice scoreboard here but I don't see anything on it that tells you how many fouls there has been for a team yeah I do not see it one and one yeah, that's the seventh against IU. And going to the line, Walton once again. Richard Mandeville checks in. Todd Leary will sit down. So Leary to the sidelines at the free throw stripe, Jason Walton. One and one. One and one coming for Walton, a 6'6 junior out of Dallas, Texas. 11 points for him today, and he is perfect from the line, five of five. And he misses that one. We put the kiss on it. The rebound pulled out of there by Pat Knight. The first miss by the Gophers this afternoon from the stripe. And Wilkerson across the timeline takes it to the left side. Pulls it back out. Slides it to the top of the key. Cross courts it to Pat Knight in the corner right. He brings it back out of the dribble. Knight goes inside to Steve Hart. Up for an easy layup. Steve Hart's fifth point of the ball game. For 97 to 47, a mock chair from the Minnesota student section here for Steve Hart's score. Now across the timeline, Ariel McDonald. We're down to 4:03 remaining in this ball game. Out to Randy Carter. Carter turns around and looks inside, flies it out to Bashan Leonard. Leonard gives it off to Ariel McDonald. He goes left side to Carter, who lobs it into Ariel, up and in. Little alley-oop play, and Ariel McDonald now has got 13. 99-47. The next point by the Gophers will bring the century mark, and you can bet the crowd will roar. Here's the pass in, knocked away, stolen. Up the floor, McDonald kicks it into Walton, and he puts it in. Jason Walton with his 13th point. And the Gopher fans come to their feet. Here's Sharon Wilkerson inside to Pat Knight, who scores, and he draws the foul. Pat Knight, sixth point of the ball game, and he will have a chance to make it seven at the line. 101-49 to score with 3.15 to go. And three new faces coming in, David Grimm, Ryan Wolf, and Townsend Orr for Minnesota. With Sean Leonard, Ariel McDonald, and Randy Carter will check to the sideline for the Gophers. 
And Pat Knight will go to the line. Whatever your travel requires, Red Buyer Park Ace is the way to go. For more information, call Ace Rent a Car, 243-6336. That's 243-6336. Ace, the intelligent alternative. Pat Knight hits the free one, and timeout is called. Pat with seven points to score. Minnesota 101, Indiana 50. We'll be back after this. This is Indiana University basketball from Learfield Sports. Last year, over a million and a half cars were stolen. The thieves who took those cars not only stole from the rightful owners, but they robbed everybody who pays car insurance premiums. That's why State Farm works with car makers to make new cars harder to steal and why we work with law enforcement officials to recover cars that are stolen. Because when a thief steals any car, he steals from all of us. This message brought to you by State Farm and your local State Farm agents. The weather might be cold outside, but the deals are hot at your Snapper dealer. Like the new Snapper Lawn Tractor, sale price from $15.99, or the Snapper Ninja Recycling Mulcher, sale price from $339.99 with no payment till October. If you're counting the day's sale spring, start your own warming trend with a hot deal during Snapper's Big Cut National Sales Event with cash discounts and take half off your choice of either a single bag grass catcher or a Ninja Mulching Kit featuring the yet unmatched Ninja Blade. With approved Snap credit, you don't have to pay a cent until October interest-free. Ask your local Snapper dealer for all the details. There's never been a better time to buy a quality Snapper mower. Well, back once again at Minnesota's Williams Arena, where the Gophers lead Indiana 101-50. to 3.15 to go in this one. Our game today brought to you in part by MX Cold Industries, powering your energy needs. And we're going to take our last timeout available right now. We'll be back after we pause for the 60-second timeout. This is Indiana University Basketball from Learfield Sports. So my husband says, honey, let's move to the country. Oh, sure, I said. But we did. I knew there'd be changes. The first one came from our new electric company. Now we get our power from an electric co-op. And with REMC, we're not just customers, we're members. We own the company. I like that. REMC even has great ideas for making our old farmhouse more livable. Yeah, country living is different, but in this case, different is better. Thanks, REMC. During this cold winter, you can save on quality products from your local participating Napa Auto Parts store. Count on the starting power you need with the Napa Legend 75-month battery. Now just $59.99 with exchange. And Napa's 12-foot-long booster cables with long-reaching tangle-resistant cables and handy carry bag as low as $9.99. Save on these and other quality parts and accessories you'll need this winter. At Napa, we keep America running. Well, back once again in Minneapolis, Minnesota basketball. 3.07 to go, clock ticking. Tazador gives the ball right side to Jason Walton, who goes to Ryan Wolf, back to David Grimm, out to Orr. Orr to Jason Walton again on the left wing. He's on the dribble, looks it in. Bounces it in low to John Thomas, who turns, fires it up no good, and the rebound comes off to Todd Lindemann. Lindemann to Sharon Wilkerson. Wilkerson across the timeline, takes it to the left side baseline, fires the jump shot, and got it. Sharon Wilkerson scores his fifth point of the ball game, and that's his first field goal. 101, 52 Minnesota. Two and a half minutes left in this one. Backcourt dribble given to Grimm. Now to Walton. Walton slides it off to Ryan Wolf. Wolf now circles to the right, gives to David Grimm. Grimm goes low to Townsend Orr. Orr pulls it back out, clears it to Walton, not a Wolf. Wolf gives it to David Grimm on the right wing. To Townsend Orr. Shot clock's down to five. Orr drives, kicks it out to Ryan Wolf. He fires up a fadeaway shot. It's no good. Rebound comes off the Pat Knight for IU. Now to Sharon Wilkerson. Wilkerson, left side to Steve Hart, baseline drive, fakes, clears it out to Mandeville, to Wilkerson for a three try, and it's short, the rebound to Hart, back up he goes, and couldn't get it. Rebound batted out of there by Jason Walton, to David Grimm, to Townsend Orr. Orr, back to Grimm, and a foul. Foul call against Indiana. This one will go on Pat Knight, that'll be his first. And Minnesota will have a couple of free throws coming here. New face in the game is Trevor Winter, a 7-foot, 250-pound freshman from Slayton, Minnesota. So he is in for one of the few times he has played in Big Ten play this year. As David Grimm goes to the line shooting a pair, Grimm for having a great 
three-point shooting touch reputation is an awful free throw shooter. He's hit just 50% in Big Ten play and he missed his first there. He'll have one more shot coming. Up it goes and it is no good again. The rebound comes off the pan night. Down the floor come the Hoosiers. Sharon, Pat Wilkerson, the Pat Knight, the Steve Hart. Hart gives it to Rod Lindemann. Lindemann inside, back out to Hart. Now to Pat Knight. And inside to Wilkerson, who fires it up and missed it. Rebound Hart, back up, he got it. Steve Hart scores his seventh point. 101-54. Here come the Gophers. Across the timeline, Townsend Orr. Orr, left side to Ryan Wolf. Wolf. Has it knocked out of bounds by Wilkerson. And into the ball game now, Hosea Crittenden, a 5'9 sophomore from Rosemount, Minnesota, for Minnesota. As Clem Haskins finally, here in the last three minutes, has unloaded his bench. Rip. Gets it in. It comes to Winter. Winter back out to Crittenden, who goes to Ryan Wolf. Wolf to Winter. Backs it out and fires. And got it. Trevor Winter gets his first two. 103 54. 54 seconds to go in this one. Wilkerson to Pat Knight. He drives, pulls up, fires cross court to Hart. Baseline move, clears it off to Mandeville. Outside to Pat Knight. He fires up an 18 footer and no good. Rebound batted out of there to Wilkerson. Sharon gives it off to Pat Knight. He takes it inside, fires again, misses again. Rebound knocked away to Steve Hart. Hart in the lane, fires up a 10-footer, and he gets it. Steve Hart's got nine. 103-56. Crittenden with the ball, and Minnesota fans obviously want him to take a shot. Out to David Grimm, inside to John Thomas. He misses, rebound batted up, and Mandeville's got it. Richard gives to Sharon Wilkerson. Down to 12 seconds, and a lally -oop play to Steve Hart. It's batted away, and a foul on Todd Lindemann. Lindemann will be nailed for his fifth foul, so he will go to the sideline. Lindemann with nine points. As Todd fouls out of the ball game, and Minnesota will go to the other end for free throws. Well, Todd ends up four out of nine from the field on. Critterton uh, hasn't hit a basket this year. I think that's why they're cheering. He's 0 for 4. He's only put up four shots. 8.9 seconds to go. David Grimm who missed both his free throw attempts earlier. Fires this one up, he got it. And Grimm's got his ninth point of the ball game. He'll look for one more. 104-56. Minnesota. Grimm eyes the second attempt, and it is short, and the rebound comes off the winner, who fires blocked partially by Ross Hales. The rebound effort to Mandeville. It's stolen away by Ryan Wolf Inside to Grimm, and a slam dunk. 11 for Grimm. One second, and that's it. This ball game is over with, and Minnesota defeats Indiana by 50. 106 to 56 here at Williams Arena in Minneapolis, Minnesota. As the Hoosiers drop their fourth Big Ten game of the season, their sixth loss of the campaign overall. Again, the final, Minnesota 106, Indiana 56. We'll be back to review this game in a moment on the Pioneer Seed Post Game Show. This is Indiana University Basketball for Blairfield Sports. Indiana Hoosier Basketball, brought to you by Coca-Cola. Always IU, always Coca-Cola. Your central Indiana Dodge dealers. Hook's Drug Store, more of what a drug store is for. The Hoosier Lottery, a proud sponsor of Indiana University Basketball. Indiana's Rural Electric Cooperatives, a power partnership providing safe and efficient electric energy to one million Hoosiers. Midas, try the Midas way, the way it should be. Pioneer Hybrid International Incorporated and your local Pioneer sales representative, PSI Energy. Call a PSI professional today for ways to save energy and your money. TWA, the most comfortable way to fly. Napa Auto Parts, we keep America running. Pursuit Herbicide, the no-till, no-fear leader for soybean weed control. Your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. And by State Farm Insurance and State Farm agents throughout Indiana who support Hoosiers basketball. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.
tough question and you want a straight answer, ask an expert. If you've got questions about your family's insurance coverage, you've got an expert right down the street, your State Farm agent. In fact, you can have a State Farm family insurance checkup to help answer your insurance questions just by calling a State Farm agent and asking. The advice is free and the decisions are yours. So why not call your State Farm agent? When you have a family, you need to watch your budget. Well, here's a tip for an exceptional value. The Dodge Caravan Family Value Wagon. It comes with air conditioning at no extra charge, based on list prices of packaged items if sold separately, plus dual airbags and dynamic side impact protection. Best of all, you get every bit of it for a very affordable price. The Dodge Caravan Family Value Wagon. See it at your nearest Dodge dealer today. And remember, you should always wear your seatbelt. To see one, just stop by the Dodge dealer in your neighborhood. It's a natural fact. Those with a better view of where they're going can best see how to get there. For soybean weed control, that foresight is just as critical. And those who look to end season bottom line performance clearly see the value of going with the best up front. No wonder you've made Pursuit Herbicide the top choice for soybean weed control today. See your Cyanamid AgriCenter dealer for Pursuit, a natural leader. And always follow label directions. You can count on Hooks. Now, Hooks gives you more with RX Watch. The RX Watch computer does more than other drugstore computers. It checks your medication against pre identified health conditions. It only takes a minute to sign up, and it's free. With RX Watch, we do more than just fill your prescription. Hooks, more of what a drugstore is for. When you want more, Hooks gives you more. Well, back once again at Minneapolis's Williams Arena, where the Hoosiers this afternoon fall to the Minnesota Golden Gophers, 106 to 56, a 50-point defeat here today. We're not positive, obviously we haven't uh, at this point checked it, but I don't think Indiana has ever been beaten by more than 50 points. But I could be wrong on that. We'll have to try and check it for you a little bit later. Let's look now at the scoring individually in this ball game today. Minnesota led by Bashan Leonard, who had a terrific afternoon. He fired in a career high 35 points, which included six three-point field goals. 35 this afternoon for Bashan Leonard. Ariel McDonald had 13 today, 13 also for Jason Walton, 11 for David Grimm, 10 for Randy Carter. Chad Colander had four. Townsend Orr had eight. Ten points for Ernest Zigamazabo and four for Trevor Winter. Hosea Crittenden, Ryan Wolf, and John Thomas all played but did not score. So this afternoon, Rashawn Leonard's 35 leads Minnesota. Also in double figures, 13 each for Ariel McDonald and Jason Walton, 11 for David Grimm, and 10 apiece for Randy Carter and Ernest Zigamazabo. For Indiana this afternoon, Damon Bailey led the Hoosiers with 13, scored in 14 minutes of play in the first half. He no longer saw action in the second half or the latter stages of the first. 13 for Damon Bailey in 14 minutes of playing time. He was the only player in double figures for IU. Todd Lindemann and Steve Hart each had nine. Eight points for Richard Mandeville, seven for Pat Knight. Two point, or five points for Sharon Wilkerson. Bryant Evans had two. Todd Leary had three. And Alan Henderson and Ross Hales did not score in this ball game. Henderson played the first six minutes and didn't play again after that. So the Hoosiers have one player in double figures today. Damon Bailey fires in 13 points as Indiana drops to 17 and six on the year, 10 and four in the Big Ten. They fall to third place in the conference this afternoon after Purdue won yesterday. So the Boilermakers have an 11 and three record. Make that 11 and four in Big Ten play. The Hoosiers now are 10 and four and in third. Minnesota is now 19 and nine overall in the season, and they stand nine and six in the Big Ten. They are in fourth place in the conference. Max, look at those team stats. Well, Indiana finishes shooting just 36.8 percent. They were 36 percent shooters in the first half. They were 37.5 percent shooters in the second half. 21 of 57 was their shooting. For Minnesota, they were absolutely sensational this afternoon. They hit 69.6% uh, in the first half. They did cool off in the second half, hitting just uh, 14 of uh, 
30 will make that. I, that's a bad statistic. I'm going to have to pick that one up for you a little bit later. As I was in a hurry here, they had so many baskets. From the uh, free throw line this afternoon, Min Indiana was just 8 of 11. They barely ever got to the line. And Minnesota was 13 to 17, 76%. Minnesota this afternoon hit 10 out of 20 three-point shots. That's 50%. Indiana was three of nine from the free th from a three-point range. Turnovers, Indiana turned it over 20 times. Indy and Minnesota just five. Minnesota turned it over only one time in that second half. And Don, we'll pick up on that uh, final stat as far as shooting is concerned when we total up those two first half for Minnesota. They were shooting 64% at 16 of 25 in the second half. They dropped off a little bit after that when they brought in some of those subs, and I'll get that for you in a second. All right, we will be back and select our PSI Energy Player of the Game in a moment. You're listening to Indiana University Basketball. Have you reviewed your homeowner's insurance lately? Thompson Hopper & Associates can tell you modern policies offer many discount provisions that can lower the cost. New home discounts up to 20%, fire extinguisher discounts, smoke detectors, non-smokers, over 50 discounts, someone home all day, neighborhood watch programs, the list goes on. And if you qualify for discounts, shouldn't you be getting them? Call Thompson Hopper & Associates. Talk to them about it. Thompson Hopper & Associates. Good guys with a good name. Built on good insurance service. Serbs Tire at 210 North Walnut is your one-stop automotive shop with Cooper Tires, the American-made and owned tire with nationwide warranties. And with the addition of top mechanic Ben Gleason, Serbs Tire is able to expand their automotive services. Brake and shock work, transmission, oil changes, and of course, Cooper Tires. Serbs Tire at 210 North Walnut, open Monday through Friday 8 to 6 and Saturdays 8 to 4, or call 362-0279. Okay, here's the deal. Wireless cable is the fastest growing investment strategy in the country, you see? No, I can't afford to be too risky. Oh, but with... that's the great part. There's no risk. Zip. Zero. Well, how much will it cost? Don't worry. We can get you in on the ground floor. Of course, you have to act now. It's a guaranteed winner. In fact, it's easy money. You can't lose. The fact is, you can lose. I'm Stefan Hodge of the Indiana Securities Division. High-pressure sales tactics like the ones you just heard are illegal in Indiana. It doesn't matter what the investment is, from wireless cable TV broadcast rights to stock. Remember, take the time to investigate before you invest. Hello? Is this Miss Ashton? Why, yes, it is. Ma'am, I have an opportunity for you. It's a once-in-a-lifetime deal. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Before you invest, call the Secretary of State's office at 1-800-223-8791. If you don't, you could be the next victim. Well, back once again, we are at Williams Arena, where this afternoon, the Hoosiers fall to the Minnesota Golden Gophers, 106-56. to And Indiana, of course, drops to third place now in the Big Ten race. Max, look at some of those individual statistics on today's game. Okay, Don, I'll, let me pick up on the shooting for uh, Minnesota. They ended up shooting 64%. They were 58% shooters in the second half on 18 of 31 after being 69% shooters in the first half. So they end up 41 of 64, 64%, as we gave you. Indiana, 22 of 59, 37% in the game. Well, Minnesota really had some outstanding shooting. Vashawn Leonard, 13 of 19. He was 6 of 10 from three-point range. McDonald, 5 of 9 from the uh, field. Krim was four of, uh, four of five. Randy Carter, five of six. Uh, Zigamazavo, four, four of five. Walton, four of seven. And on and on you could go as they did some outstanding shooting uh, against Indiana. For the Hoosiers, they really didn't have a lot to show. Indiana's Pat Knight was three of 11. Richard Mandeville was four of nine. Steve Hart finished up four of six from the field. Brian Evans took only two shots, hit one. Henderson took one shot, and he missed it. Todd Leary was just one of five. Todd Lindemann, four of nine. So nobody was shooting very well. Rebounding, Indiana had uh, 32 rebounds in the game, with Pat Knight being the leading rebounder for Indiana with six rebounds. Lindemann today, only four rebounds. And it was 
Damon Bailey, who was four of seven from the field. He was two of two from three-point range. He hit all three of his free throws and playing only 14 minutes this afternoon with 13 points. And probably if anybody uh, did anything uh, when Indiana was still in contention, it was Damon Bailey. Well, there's no question about that. And so Damon Bailey becomes our PSI Energy player of the game for today's contest with his 13-point effort in the 14 minutes he played in the first half of action. We'll be back with the assistant coach of the Hoosiers, Norm Ellerberger, in a moment. Another Pioneer Seed uh, postgame show continuing. This is Indiana University Basketball from Learfield Sports. Take off to a vacation of a lifetime. Adventure Tours will fly you to the stars in hours with their air charter service to Branson. No more long rides and uncomfortable buses. Call 1-800-747-8333 and ask for the early bird special. You'll receive three days, two nights in Branson, including meals, escort service, and best seats for stars like Tony Orlando, Mel Tillis, and Wayne Newton. That's 1-800-747-8333. And visit the stars in Branson in hours with Adventure Tours. 1-800-747-8333. Imagine traveling to the finest entertainment and getting paid for it. It could happen as a tour coordinator through Adventure Tours. For a limited time, just by getting a group together to see the hottest acts with the best tickets, you can enjoy fully commissionable packages available for just $2.99 per person, plus $500 in free long-distance calls for your group. It's first class all the way with Adventure Tours. Enjoy a trip to Branson and tickets to Shoji Tabuji, Tony Orlando, Ray Stevens, Charlie Pride, and more. Travel and get paid for it. Call Adventure Tours now at 1-800-747-8333. The people at the Central Indiana Midas Shops are showing that there's a different way to get your car repaired. It's called the Midas Way. They properly diagnose the problem so the work is done right the first time. They fix only what needs to be fixed, give you their exclusive inspection, and thoroughly explain your options. They honor your Midas warranty without hassle. They prove that a car repair company can be professional, responsive, and caring. So see your Central Indiana Midas Shops for that different way to get your car repaired. The Midas Way. That's the way it should be. The heart of a winner. It defies expectations. A quick fake to the left, fake to the right. What's he going to do next? It defies conventions. What a remarkable display of teamwork we're seeing here tonight. And on occasions, it even defies gravity. Whoa, a big slam dunk. He was just hanging in the air. No one could touch him. At Pioneer Hybrid, we're proud to support the Indiana Hoosiers. And we salute everyone who has the heart of a winner. See your Pioneer sales representative for the variety right for you. Well, back once again here at Williams Arena in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where this afternoon, Indiana beaten by Minnesota, 106-56, to the final score. Joining us on the postgame show, as always, assistant coach Norm Mellenberger, who not only has a difficult task here this afternoon in the postgame, but had to walk up so many stairs that he's got to be out of breath a little bit. But, Norm, obviously a, a tough day for Indiana. Did, uh, uh, did this thing look any better from way up here than oh, it did no. down on the floor? It, it may not look as good. <laughs> I'm not sure. I thought, uh, you know, we're right down there courtside, and, and, and quite a few times during that game, I thought I'd like to be a little bit further away from this than I, than I was. I was too darn close. <laughs> Norm, uh, obviously, uh, Indiana gets started this afternoon. Minnesota gets off to a hot shooting start. Uh, and uh, Bob Knight sets down Alan Henderson with uh, six minutes gone in the ball game. Obviously, we were not playing to his degree of standards defensively I that was my assumption would that be the case yeah that you know going into this thing this is a special game I mean this is a extremely uh, uh, important game to to uh, both both ball clubs you know we're we're uh, fighting to stay alive in the thing we've got to have a, a certain kind of game it's extremely important to Minnesota they're on national TV uh, their their players are quoted in the paper that uh, you know the only thing better than playing Indiana here and in, under this situation with uh, with the with national TV would be playing in the uh, NCAA finals and you know all of that that whole scenario the whole build up was put this game uh, uh, you know way up uh, way up in everybody's minds anyhow so we have to have a certain kind of game uh, all year long see this this thing just what happened down there they finally just kind of came to a head. You know, for the all uh, year long, we have fought with this team about uh, uh, movement, uh, offense, defense. Uh, you know, running the court, just just basic things that we've got to have to win. And uh, we had the best practice uh, yesterday, and uh, really a good practice the day before, and just just super of, of, of the things that coach had been emphasizing both offensively and defensively. And and uh, I thought, you know, we we, we all thought that we we're really ready. We came in here. And in the first six minutes, it was exactly the opposite of the way we practiced. 
And uh, like I say, now, this didn't just come to a head here. It, 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 it has been happening. And coach said, we are not going to practice one way and play another way. I, I've fought this long enough. I, you know, and you know, by that time we're down 10. And, uh, you know, so he says, if you're not going to play the way I want you to play, then we'll try to get some folks in there. Well, you know, we end up playing with a, a lesser outfit. You know, we're not the... We're not the best team in the world, you know, with our with our best players playing. And then when we got to get into the into that second line, why in in a especially in a supercharged game like this, why we're going to get pounded, and uh, and that sure did happen. Obviously, when you get pounded like this, uh, you you draw some conclusions. Obviously, number one is that uh, you just can't. You, your your front line people have got to be in the basketball game. Damon Bailey played uh, 14 minutes in the first half, had 13 points. He actually played pretty well, at least from an offensive standpoint. But really, nobody else today got into it offensively. Uh, you know, you, and, and it comes out how uh, how far or how long do you you know ride this pony? You know, you you try to you try to uh, ride it out to, to to the end of the season. You know, there's what we got four more, four more big, very important ball games. Uh, you know, and, and and try to goose it along and 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 uh, milk feed it and 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 sugar coat it and and try to win that way, or just say, hey, whoa, it, it is going to stop now. And uh, and now let's go see what's going to happen tomorrow. But uh, we did one thing for sure. We we stopped that lackadaisical play, uh, uh, and uh, we did another thing for sure. We got our butts kicked. <laughs> I was going to ask you one thing. You kind of answered it right then. Is there anything that you can come away from this game with on a positive nature? Yeah, the, uh, uh, the airplane is not going to crash, <laughs> and we're going to go home. We've already had our crash for today, so the airplane will make it home. I'm sure that you cannot have two crashes in one day. Let's well, <laughs> Restricted between the uh, 40 minutes we played uh, ball. Uh, not really. You know, I I don't think that uh, either team got well. They, they got a lot out of it because their fans got here and and got to yell and scream and make fun of us for 40 minutes, and that was really good for them. But uh, uh, yeah, well, it'll, uh, Max, I think the only way I can answer that we'll have to wait to practice tomorrow and see. You know, certainly if you are not getting the if you're not getting the message through through uh, uh, practicing and planning and, and and going through it that way then uh, then, then maybe you'll get the message this way through a, uh, a complete embarrassment and uh, you know we'll just have to wait and see the reason I was thinking about that was the fact that Michigan State just blew Minnesota away in their previous game and you know they came back today and well and well. Michigan State uh, comes back as one uh, one uh, beat Ohio State too Michigan State's probably playing the best they played in a long time so you know that's uh, but we don't have to worry about them till we get by Illinois or I, I would I take it. I would take it back. Uh, really, you can't really even tell tomorrow because it's going to be the next ball game. You've been practicing pretty well all season long. In fact, I've heard uh, lots of good comments about uh, practices and practice sessions and things going well in practices. In fact, some of the players have said we're really a pretty good practice team. But in games, they don't apply what they learn in practice. And and let's let's don't be the, the you know it's awful easy in a situation like this to be the great uh, the great doom crew. You know we could sit up here and cry and bemoan and talk. you know uh, hey uh, the, the, this ball club has won maybe one more ball games than they should have. Uh, well, you, know, we've, you know we you know when you think about it uh, you don't. Uh, win three games in a row on on in the last ten seconds, like like, like we have at home. You know we, we've had, you know you and, and you don't go through a season without blowing somebody out. You know we really haven't done that in the Big Ten. So so we're not uh, we're not the greatest team in the world. And and but but we have when we got together and played the way we have to play to be successful, which is a team game and a and a tough game and a and a and a, and a Bob Knight way. Uh, then then uh, we've 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 been good. And then there's been the other side of it. Well. If we're going to continue on and have uh, get into the tournament and, and, and have some success in the tournament, we better get back to the Bob Knight way. By golly, I'll bring something positive out of this thing this afternoon. You've rested your players for Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there was no sense getting the, you know, Damon played well enough to continue on play, and there's no sense. See, he didn't practice yesterday. He had a, I, I can't remember when this team is, has been healthy. Yeah, I really can't. You know, you got, uh, got the best one-arm player out there in college basketball running up and down the court. You know, Damon didn't, didn't practice yesterday. He had the flu and he had the fever, 
and uh, you know he was weakened somewhat by that. Hart Hart couldn't practice because he uh, they had to give him a shot to relax back spasms, and he and he couldn't practice, and and on and on. And you know you got Pat Graham that that, that can't even play for a while here, and uh, uh, you know this uh, this ship uh, tilts back and forth every every darn time we launch it, and uh, uh, I think today we sunk it, but but, <laughs> but but we'll get her back. Hey Normie, I'll say one thing: you only have one counting in the loss column, even if you lose it by fifty or uh, by that's two. That's true. That's true. You know you could uh, and we could have scratched we could have come back with our seniors and in, in, in that second half and scratched and made you know made a good second half out of it but uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, that that butt was kicked and already in a box on the bus heading back to Bloomington so let's play those young guys all right Norm thanks for joining us you got it thank you Norm Ellenberger on our post game show we'll be back in a moment with final thoughts right after we pause you're listening to Indiana University basketball the people at the central Indiana might have shop to join. appreciate culture you've got to enjoy things like this <laughs> Or this. In early Mesopotamia, evidence of the first order.